The uh, Tuesday, July 25th uh, Board of Selectmen uh, meeting together is uh, typical. We'll cover our liaison reports, open for public comment, hear from the town manager. We have a uh, hearing classification plan change to be discussed tonight. We'll um, chat and, and amend the uh, Board of Selectmen policies around uh, licenses that are described in Article 3 of the Selectmen policies. We'll review a uh, Kino policy developed by um, Town Council. We'll finalize the Town Manager's Fiscal 18 goals and we'll review a um, Board of Selectmen survey that was it's been discussed now. Is this the third time we've discussed this? Yeah, I think so, maybe, yeah. Yeah. Uh, regarding the uh, potential, potential uh, or surveying attitudes regards of the potential override. Um, and with that, I'll open it up for selecting liaisons reports. Alex? I have nothing to report today. Dan? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. A couple items. Uh, spoke to Chairman Phil Ficino of the Reading Municipal Light Department uh, Board. Uh, the CAB, the advisory board to mm -hmm. the RMLD, has been trying to get a quorum to meet so they can convene that subcommittee regarding uh, the pilot payments to the town of Reading, but uh, they haven't had much luck, what Phil told me. Uh, RMLD wants to move ahead with it. Uh, CAB seems to be the sticking point. Which right members now. of the CAB have been unavailable? I don't know. He didn't say. But uh, it's a quorum issue. It's not a desire issue on there. Sure. So this was this was looking at the schedule of paying, you know, re yeah. reopening that reopening discussion. the way in which that is calculated, indexing it a different way, yeah. looking at any and all a long uh, established, never convened committee. Yeah. yeah. So, so so it's the the, the RMLD wants to do, it, but that's that the CA, it, it's actually the CAB to form the committee. Right. Yeah. If you look in their minutes back in whenever. Why would the CAB uh, want? I asked myself that question. Yeah, that RMLD, our relationship. Yeah, they RMLD. did it at the urging of uh, then chair. Uh, I'm sorry, then general manager Len Rucker. So Rucker wanted to do it. No, I'm not talking about why the committee was established. I'm yeah. talking about why wouldn't the discussion happen with the um, commissioners directly rather than the CAB? This is a discussion well, between the town um, of Reading and the commissioners. You can certainly approach them and see if they want to restructure it. I'm, I'm sure they'll want to get the CAB involved. I, I get local? that. I get that entirely. The question. Well, I yeah. think it's John because the yeah. committee, as established right. previously, 10, 15 yep. years ago, called for the CAB to convene the convene the, the review process. So there was a there was a committee in place to do such things. It just never had done it. And so, in order to follow the protocols of the way it was laid out 10 or 15 years ago, it's a CAB subcommittee. I think that's the hanging that, point that here. Makes, right? That right. makes perfect sense, John. It should, uh, the, I guess we had to decide if it's still not working after right. 18 years and now a couple of weeks. Yeah. Well, this is a summer. Right? Fair question. <laughs> I'll give them a few more weeks. Uh, I don't know when the annual amount is. Bob, do you know when they set that amount every year? Um, I think se September? No. Well, they they may be I calculate year. it in, in April based on annual, so that's the default already. In theory, the clock started running, I guess you'd say July 1st. Okay. Remember, we just came up in town meeting. It's now July, heading into August, so we're already three months. So I wouldn't yeah. want this to go past. No. So, Dan, November. do you think, do you think I'm not going to say the reluctance of the CAB, but sort of the, the reticence yeah, is because the CAB represents all the towns, whereas the beneficiary of this is mostly Reading, so I it's not in their sort of self-interest to come I would out. hesitate to uh, speculate on that. I th it may be a simple quorum problem. It's not uncommon for them to have quorum problems. It's summer. It's yeah. a summer. Yeah. Okay. I think, you know, John, if I have yes, my, Bob. Um, I've spoken to the three um, town managers, administrators, and, you know, given them order of magnitude in the, the discussion, and they're not, they're not concerned, and, you know, nor are their boards. Um, I said, you know, most likely this is an order of magnitude of 20 or Twenty-five or fifty thousand dollars at most. I said, "Yeah, that's not you know, as long as you're not asking to double the dividend from no, okay, almost two million. Anything else, Dan? Yeah, uh, as uh, many of you are aware, uh, we were in the midst of uh, the steps leading up to renegotiating the Comcast uh, cable TV and other uh, packaged items, which we don't regulate, just the cable TV part." And as a part of that, we're looking for community input. The most uh, important thing that people can do have not already participated is to take the Reading Community Needs Assessment Survey, which relates to uh, wants and desires for our cable service going forward. Uh, that can be found at, for those of you who want to write this down, https colon 
www.surveymonkey.com slash r slash reading ma dash survey <laughs> yeah so if uh can we just get it on the website everybody <laughs> I would. I think we, we put it on the link. front page is it on yeah. the website yeah i think so i'm having trouble here with my computer yeah if we uh Maybe the paper will uh, want to run a little article. That might be helpful if yeah. the newspaper actually advertised that. Um, anything else, Dan? Yes. I've uh, been attending uh, Board of Health meetings as liaison. Um, at their last meeting, and this was in tonight's paper, an executive session, in my view, with no prior notice, was announced, uh, which I thought was irregular. Uh, and there's some other issues going on with the board right now. Uh, Principally, they have not appointed Laura Lasik, with the new newly hired health agent, as their mm -hmm. health agent to act on their behalf. Fortunately, the town is covered in that regard right now by the North Reading gentleman, Bob Gracie, but that may or may not continue for you know, a lot longer. So I think it's time to have that board in here. We need to talk to frankly about some of these issues. Okay. So I would hope that could happen soon. I understand. I I if I could just add a small point. Um, I've only read the article once, uh, got late today. Um, just to emphasize, there are no vacancies in the health division uh, that are uncovered. We have um, two actual people from North Reading covering um, for the public health nurse and the uh, health agent. Otherwise, and we have a health agent, she can only do duties that are, if you will, internal and not the responsibility of the Board of Health or their designated agent. So she can do all the rest of the work, but she can't do that. So I can't describe the, the details, but we had an incident over the weekend where the chair of the Board of Health needed to do things, and he did a great job. Uh, Laura was physically present with her and helping, but she did not have the legal authority to do those actions. And it turned out Bob Bracey was not available during that period of time. Um, so the town is covered. I said that two weeks ago. We have uh, all the positions covered. It's not ideal, but you know, if there's any kind of a problem, any time of a crisis, we're okay. But nonetheless, that appointment uh, ought to be made, in my view. Yeah. Anything else, Dan? That's all. Thank you, Barry. <clears throat> so today, actually, I attended uh, the initial meeting of um, the Wayfinding and Branding uh, Subcommittee. You may recall that um, through uh, uh, most of Julie Mercier's efforts, we procured a very, very difficult to obtain grant um, that allowed us um, um, consulting services to kind of have a professional come in and talk about sort of uh, not only the wayfinding but just sort of how we brand ourselves as a community you know things from not just signage but furniture from just you know what we think of ourselves and, and sort of how to restructure or, or how to you know kind of put ourselves out there as a community <coughs> today we had the first meeting it was um, a lot of town staff, myself as a selectman, um, some local business owners, and it was really just kind of interesting beginning to kind of just sort of, you know, being asked about, you know, what, you know, what do you think, you know, what, describe writing in one word, describe writing in two words, and just all the diverse kind of thoughts that people had. Um, and so his task is kind of to come up and sort of give us some suggestions on sort of how we brand ourselves as a, as a community. The guy that's doing it, um, I read up on him and, and uh, he's done a lot of the stuff for other communities. So I think it's going to be something really positive and um, I think a lot to take from. So today was just the initial one. I'll keep everybody posted as we go forward. I think that there's a community, um, I think there's a public meeting kind of anticipated, I think, sometime in the fall. Um, how many people? Uh, probably a dozen, maybe five, dozen, twelve. Yeah, about that. Yeah, I didn't 15, count, but maybe, yeah. You know, um, Town staff, so DPW police, library, um, you know Andrew of economic development, um, and then some uh, community folks, some business owners. It was it was um, it, a good group. It'd be fun to kind of see what he comes up with. And and again, this was a highly coveted grant that we were really lucky to get. So um, we'll see what happens going forward. Thank you. And just checking on the web, I don't see the uh, the link to the. Uh, RCTV community needs assessment. Okay. Do we know if you can not see that link, then you can do more than I can right now. Okay, so you're stuck. Well, okay. I'm, I'm stuck. Done here. I'll come over and take I'll, care of that. I'll figure it out. 
Can, uh, I, can I just ask, sure. uh, maybe Steve, you, you might know, um, is the is the um, is the uh, a lot of folks done it yet, or is it just really small? Is it? Some have done it. I don't think as many as they would like so far. How many? Do you know how many you've gotten? Yeah, I forgot to mention. The more we can get, the better. Yeah, no. But and, and broadly across the community, John. I'm right back. Okay. Yeah, you have till uh, I believe July 30th, 31st. Oh, there is. Oh, so they're only collecting uh, information until July 31st? That was the original plan. Oh. It's been out there a while. Yeah. And we will also need to hold a public hearing. I meant to ask Bob if that's been scheduled yet. But, uh, I'll ask him when it comes up. There it is. Bob, the uh, public hearing we need to hold for the cable TV renewal, do we have a uh, series of dates? I don't, I, Matt would know. I, I'm not aware of them, so I don't think okay. we have defined them yet. Is it going to be August, September? Do you know? Not August for sure. Okay. okay. I, I didn't even know he was talking about as early as September last yeah. time we spoke, but I'll, I'll check. Okay. And uh, I have nothing to report. Uh, with that, I'll open the floor for public comment. If you'd like to speak, please stand, give your name, and let us know what's on your mind. No, you don't, Bill. question of the land across from Memorial Park, there was a discussion two years ago where this very topic came up, maybe it was closer to three years ago, um, and the question I think was to town council to research the nature of the original grant and determine. Is this for the land of Memorial, 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 Memorial Park? It's not Oakland Road. No, Memorial Park. No, it's two, two topics. Right. This is Memorial I just want to make sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, the last I knew we had thoroughly researched that three years ago and knew all the facts we were needing. I think the action is maybe to bring those facts forward anew. Okay, um, we have records from you know past Board of Selectmen's discussions. I can just reproduce those minutes. Okay. I, I, and I don't know if, if there's still some unanswered questions. Yeah. Certainly we'll deal with them. It, 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 it would be nice to see them. Okay, Any t if you want to swing by. Anytime. Let's put it back, put it to bed once and for all. Okay. And on Oakland, is that, is that possible? And by, and by the way, tell town council I want my town report back. Oh, <laughs> Ivria is coming tonight. You can mention it to her. <laughs> and on the matter of Oakland Road, I think uh, after town meeting, I don't know of any other activity that's occurred. Um, I've met with a private party um, and discussed possible options and redevelopment. I don't know if Andrew has. Um, certainly nothing formal. You still would need to go through a public process, but I'm just trying to do some due diligence in the background. Nothing that's been communicated to this board? No. And I have nothing to tell you other than what I just said. Given what Bob said, that the, state tr uh, the uh, town treasurer has a, can sell tax property. Uh, I believe that is tax property. She can sell it. That's possible. Yeah, mm -hmm. if it all is, yeah. yeah. And, and oh, the by the way, it's he now. Huh? <laughs> it's a he now, by the way. Oh, whatever. <laughs> I've been, we've been around for a while. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing is, uh, you may recall, I made a comment about the so-called cracks in the library wall. Well, they were not. They were indeed cracks because I, as I go by there one day, they, they ground them all up and fill them with epoxy. So whoever told you there were basement cracks, uh, this spoke to you or lied, whichever way you want to put it. And then they yeah, put I a nice that. coating on the whole thing, so it's sealed. Well, um, at the time they started to develop, that's how they reported it to us. Yeah. As it continued to develop far more than it should have, that's when they realized we got a problem. So uh, we we asked him to fix it. Is the town and, paid for that or is the um, no? The contractor ate that. He said it was a bad installation. So yeah, if you looked at it, I've only seen the first effort. I haven't seen the completed wall. They did the top. They did the side. They've done everything. It should look really nice. It, it does as, as nice as it can. I, I'm up there about everything. Okay. It looks nice. And they said the back had enough um, you know permeable area that it shouldn't be a problem in terms of the wall cracking and moisture getting in there. This was freezing over the winter. Um, if it had been left untreated, it definitely would have decayed over time much faster because moisture would be getting into it, different cracks, no it, question. As you remember, last year was a very hot year, and uh, from my uh, civil engineer grandson, apparently what they did, they showed up with a bad batch of con concrete, 
dumped a lot of water in it and just hmm. to pour it, and then everything went poof. It hardened too quickly. Yeah. No, the water went out of it and didn't that. That's a problem. It takes 27 days of uh, concrete to cure. And I just want to let you know that uh, whatever I told you was expansion cracks in the spoke. Thank you. So the way you want to speak. Thank you. Anything else, Bill? Any other public comment? Yes. Hi, Vanessa. Good evening. Hi. Vanessa Alvarado, Grand Street. Um, I know that the override survey is on the agenda for later on in the evening at the Port of Dana, but I just want to take a moment to thank you for um, be here being open to public comment at the last Port of Spikeman meeting. I know that it can be difficult to strike a balance between getting it right and getting it done. Um, so I just I appreciate you being open to comments from those that are not. You. Yeah, the, I mean, the idea is to gather as much information with as little effort as possible and, you know, may, you know, many eyes looking at it. I think it's a better product. We're going to talk about it tonight and, you know, it won't, probably won't be perfect. We'll probably kick ourselves that we should have asked this question later on, but at a certain point, we just got to yeah. get it going. But, but I want to thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And I, I don't think this survey is the last one. I'm guessing you know, there are a few months that we're going to be yeah. things, so. Um, there being no other public comment, Bob, um, Just one thing. I want to let um, the board know and the community at large know on October 4th, which is a Wednesday, uh, we're going to have an economic development forum at the library. We'll be downstairs. We'll use the full large conference room. Um, over the next uh, month or so, maybe a few weeks, we'll develop an agenda. We have a draft agenda. Um, it's going to be really. It's going to be really interesting. There'll be a couple of other communities coming. Um, we are going to discuss specific projects in Reading. Um, whether the con whether the developers come or the owners come to speak of them, we're not sure yet. Um, you know, I, I can now say that the post office project, which had been sold some time ago, has been approved by all the bodies that need to, up to the point of now they can talk to the town and go through a process, go through uh, CPDC. Um, so they have gotten uh, mass historic was the longest approval process. Uh, that'll be one. There's some other downtown pro uh, properties that have changed hands because of the change in zoning, I assume. And Andrew's right on top of those. Um, we will describe, or he will describe some of those. Um, we're also going to just finally open the door a little bit for the community to see some thoughts down on Walker's Brook. Um, that's still further off, certainly, and the board will have some more discussion about that. Um, but it's going to be a pretty interesting uh, meeting, I think. In addition, um, sometime either, you know, just before then or then, you'll see a lot of visual work that Jesse and Andrew have both worked on. A lot of that will be the website, which I can't show you right now. And her final report visually is stunning. Um, it's so easy to see. It's so easy to read. It just, it's just such a comfortable document. It's really good. Mm -hmm. Aside from the quality of the work, it's just a good document. It's one of these two pages, so you can get a lot of information in front of you on yeah. the table at once. So again, October 4th, I would ask that the board, you know, be posted and be able to attend as much as you can. I'm also going to ask the Finance Committee tomorrow night to at least send a few representatives. Uh, because there is a certain amount of finance involved in economic development on the revenue what, side, what time? Um, we think it'll be 7 o'clock at the library. So that's a Wednesday. All right. yep. That is a Wednesday. There's a slight possibility we may open the doors at 6 if there's visual things for people to inspect. We don't know that yet. This will be in the community room, the big community room? Yes, downstairs. Do you expect overflow by any chance, or I guess there's um, no way to know? There's, there's really no way to know, but that holds, I believe it's 120 or 25, so that seems okay. <laughs> it's going to be an interesting meeting. It's not going to be the Red Sox playing, so you know, there's some balance there. Get your booty on that one. Well, this board has talked so much about economic development and how it takes time to get the um, processing right and getting the staffing right and the focus right. Um, this will be largely the first time, maybe not, Andrew's certainly not spoken, but the first time they'll be able to see, I, I would say, more tangible results and be able to see yes. the headlights will point out into the future a bit more. Right. So as we get closer, we'll speak more about it, but I'd encourage everyone to mark uh, mm -hmm. October 4 in the calendar, and uh, I'm excited. Yeah. Eric. Um, I know you're scoping out the agenda. I, I think it would be really <coughs> important, helpful, if we can get some members from the development community there. Yeah. Mean, they're the ones who are going to, you know, sort of would look at these projects, scope them, 
determine you know the value of doing things and you know and can talk more about than you know than just theory mm -hmm. they can talk about well this is what you need to do in order to do to do this I mean more practicality and, and I know we're not ready to go out with specific projects but it would be really helpful to have someone you know one or two representatives <laughs> if possible to kind of really help kind of steer some of that discussion and, and, and add a lot of color to it so um, you know you, it, it would be nice to kind of if, if we can to try to get somebody or one or two people maybe from that group yeah um, if I might um, there, w there will definitely be developers in the audience some of them will have mustache and glasses and sit in the back right no I mean yeah. um, the tricky part is there are some developers who will have projects in front of CPDC and by then they'll be in in process and one of them will probably be just about ready I don't know how willing and they would be and, and how smart it would be for them to say much in a public meeting when they're in front of another board, right. quite honestly. Right. Right. I think sort of an after effect, absolutely, for someone that's completed a process, they're done, they're, they're finished, this is what I did or didn't like about my experience in Reading. Um, from, I, I had this discussion with Andrew this morning. I said, will developers come? And he said, absolutely, but most of them want to sit and just right. listen and no, observe. Yeah. And in a sense, this event is for them to see is well is Reading a welcoming community. Right. Right. What what show does Reading put on to make me interested? Right. Andrew's got me here. He's got me interested. He's he, there's some developers. He says he talks to almost every day. Right. Um, that didn't that just used to drive past Reading and now they know. He, they know the whole town. They've driven around. They see opportunities. They like them. Um, you know, the salesman's brought the product as far as he can. Right. Now it's our job to. He's done a very really good job of that. I might add. To he has the, the awareness is kind of amazing yeah. how much percolating interest there is they've, they've developed the product they've done the <coughs> packaging now the dogs have to eat the dog food well no <laughs> well we're starting to do the packaging <laughs> yes. i mean starting yeah, let's, yeah. The marketing group needs to get kicked in now. i actually think a better idea with the developers is after that forum have a focus group with just them. That's a good idea. To get their thoughts. Yeah, I think um, you're both right that developers are a really important audience here. Yeah, yeah. and maybe just, you know, it, obviously if somebody is want to have a project in town and they want to, the guy sitting next to them is also looking at the same project, they may not want to raise their hand. I get that. Yeah. But then, you know, maybe we could, uh, there could be room where we can invite individuals, members of the permanent building committee. These are guys that have done this stuff too. Maybe, maybe yeah, they'll, they'll some be role, uh, you know, kind of. Okay. So that we can kind of separate kind of the theory, you know, you know that looks great on paper, but you can't build that there. You it's, know, there's really two audiences for this meeting, or maybe more. There's the public who I desperately want to help to get aware of what we're trying to do and the path we're taking, and at least the early results to the extent you even want to call them results. And then there's the developers themselves right. who you want to be aware of right. how, how um, we're thinking about it and what role they can play. To your point, Barry, I wonder if there's a way where maybe not a specific developer but maybe a, 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 t a typical development project or something that's meaty enough where Andrew might present it or another individual might present it. It's not, it need not be a, a literal a development specific, project, yeah. well, but it's still enough for the public to say, okay, this is the process, this is how it works, this is how it'll play out, get plus or minus. Is there, is there a way to give a flavor of that for the public consumption? Short of having a developer stand up and say, this is what um, I think in order for that to make sense, it would have to be on something specific and tangible, not theoretical. So let's you know walk through an old project, maybe. I'll try to think of one that has finished, that's relevant. Um, it's going to have to take some thought. I mean, the good news is we have some time to develop it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know we'll uh, we'll invite uh, specifically our three elected officials. I haven't told them yet. Um, they were recently just still working on a budget. Um, and I don't know what their interest will be, but I know and all three of them have said to me in the past, please let me know when you have economic development meetings. Some Seth of these projects Moulton's, may require some state. Yeah, Seth Moulton's right. staff has indicated some interest in the past. There's a fellow we, we know well it's, that, that will come. Um, the governor's office and, you know, the um, housing and economic development executive director have expressed interest in the past. So we'll, we'll invite people. I don't want to oversell the event, though. It's, you know... It's a starting point, I guess. That's why this is almost, I don't want to say educational, but it's an informational yeah. for folks in the audience. So if you yeah. took, <laughs> I'm just talking out loud now, if you took 30 Haven and you said, if it was still the Atlantic, we know it's not. Yeah. But if it were, this is how you basically approach it in theory. And just 
you know, it's, it's completely fictitious, but it's got yeah. enough meat on the bones to let people see how it would be constructed. Well, Jesse asked me a question today uh, via email that, uh, you know, I hadn't really thought about, and I don't know how to answer, but it would be good if I could. All right, so you improved the downtown years ago. What's the economic development value of that? It's a good question. I'd have to sit down with the assessor. We'd have to look at all the properties on Main Street, try to get some sense of how they changed over the period of time versus other built, uh, you know, properties in other parts of town. It's not an easy question to answer. Well, you almost have a, to go back yeah. to a time prior to that, take a snapshot of the values, take a you know snapshot of the businesses, create an executive summary, and then you frame forward 15 years essentially, which is pretty much when that started, I think, yep. roughly 12 years ago probably. Now you look at those values and you have to discount two and a half because oh. two and a half is the automatic climb. We look at them relative to other commercial property. Reading is the only way I can think of doing it, but whatever we do is not going to be perfect. It's going to be a guess. No, it's going to be an approximation. But it's an interesting question. The pace of this stuff, though, is geological, right, yeah. in that you, know, you say, okay, we did the downtown. But last year, it was only last year that we redid the zoning. Right. That's oh, yeah. really going to push. Up. And there, there are developments from we 40 did, That hours. was this year. Yeah, that was April. So, yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> so I mean, that was months was ago. Right. So, you know, maybe maybe it took doing the downtown to get the impetus to do the, you know. So, I mean, this stuff, you, you, you know, 10 year 15, planning. 15 years maybe isn't even enough to kind yeah. of measure. Well, unfortunately, what, what in the, as you know, in the planning world, 10 years is tomorrow right. or yesterday. I have a hard time having the patience for that, and most people do. So, but it's a it's a good question. You know, when you do things, you should always be thinking about measuring the results so what? as best you can. Dan, just sort of bookend this discussion, Bob. You meant, mentioned the importance of CPDC. Yeah, this is our chief regulatory body regarding uh, development, and I believe they are still down one person. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Associate. Yeah, we still uh, down one on ZBA also about zoning board oh, review. ZBA too. I didn't realize I that. I believe so. And conservation. Committee. Yes, I think someone just left ZBA in the last month or so. Yep, I think I announced that when we did the appointment. And um, right. water cemetery trustees. Are we still too short? Oh yeah. Okay. We haven't. I knew there was one. I two did not reapply that I know of. Two have not reapplied. I could. That could. That information could be out of date. That was a month ago. Janet. Janet I don't remember who the other one was. I guess so. Anyways. Make sure you plea to yeah. uh, all the citizens. Okay. okay. Um, any other comments from the board? We may have one that was about Okay. Any other questions from the board or the public? Okay. If not, we'll move on to uh, the next sure. topic. We have a notice sure. to read. I do. To the habits of the town of Reading, please take notice that the board of selectmen will and the town of Reading will hold a public hearing on July 25th, 2017 in the Selectman's Meeting Room, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Massachusetts, to amend the FY18 non-union classification plan at 7.20 p.m. A copy of the proposed document regarding this topic is available in the town manager's office, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Mass, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday from 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m., Tuesday from 9.30 a.m. I'm sorry, 7.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. <coughs> It is attached to the hearing notice on the website at www.reddingma.gov. All interested parties are invited to attend this hearing or may submit their comments in writing or by email prior to 6 p.m. on July 25th, 2017 to town manager at ci.reading.ma.us. Thank you, Dan. Bob? Um, again, I apologize. I can't show you anything, so you'll have to imagine. <clears throat> um, in your You're packet. not on the Internet? Is that what happened? No, the whole thing is uh, not interested in dealing with me right now. I kind of like my kids some days. Um, oh, you can't. I can't do anything. As soon as I do something, it shuts off. So I've got it here. Is it needed. plugged in? Uh, it is plugged in, and it's having, when I call up the internet, or the, the uh, website, town website, it just black screens. And then when I go to put this thumb drive in, it black screens. So it's not happy about something. And then it's trying to diagnose itself. So to project on a different screen, or no? You don't think, all right. I think we'll be OK. All right, if you might have a challenge in a few minutes, but I'll try to see what I can do. Um, I'm asking the board to add a, a position in grade F. It's a position that um, was in the budget um, 
and it was either going to be grades F or G. We hadn't decided um, until we started interviewing folks. I probably should have come to the board um, one or two meetings ago to do this, but we haven't yet hired a person. We have gone through the process and we have a candidate. This new uh, position in uh, Gene's department was meant to be someone who could deal with a lot of, or at least some of the nighttime boards, as well as do, uh, if you will, administrative work during the day. So it's a varied work schedule. And um, if you don't mind, I would ask you to add the position administrative specialist into grade F. When you uh, voted on the classification plan yet, we hadn't completely decided, although I had a pretty good idea this is where it was going. Um, so we didn't do it at that time. Okay. Any questions from the board? So was this, was this a budgeted position? Oh, so, yeah. So, so it's in the budget. We, we yeah, and it's fine. It's, where we're this hiring. This is a classification it's, item. Yeah, it's, 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 again, in a perfect world, I, I probably should have brought this to you two or four weeks ago. Because okay. I knew by then, I just didn't think of it. Does this affect any current positions? No, just this is a, posi a person we're wanting to hire. Okay. But we can't do that, not that this is a problem. If someone's available in a month, uh, so it's not a problem, but I better do it now. Sure. Okay. Is this analogous to like a, a, a Darlene Foley position? Um, it's, it's, it's a higher position than, um, let me just make sure before I speak, it's, it's higher than all the administrative assistant positions um, because it is meant to work very flexible hours and if you will this and I say this very respectfully um, this is the position we scaled down and tried to replace John Fido with um, so it was more than a clerical position but certainly not all the things John brought to the table to try to get some of our boards integrated and talking to each other by starting having someone that goes to a few of the meetings well we spent a lot of time last time talking about getting the boards talking to each other and specifically as I understand it this uh, new person will start with ZBA you know, ZBA is a board that's never really been on our radar in terms of much support and they have been swamped in the last two years and will be for the next two years on just 40B applications so we've got something like six past and present. Who's the one who staffs that generally right? Or no one does. Oh. The building inspector once upon a time many years ago used to go to some of their meetings stopped many years ago. Gene and Julie went to some of the 40B meetings, oh, but so they're not, not generally. They're regular. Okay. We have a fair amount of, we, we have three part-time. Yeah, we have a fair it's amount of boards that do not have staff support. There's just, there's no person, there's no position. Yeah. All right, so that makes sense. If there's no other discussion, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, yeah, Sorry, public comment? Hearing none. Yeah. Uh, move the board of select and close the hearing on the FY18 classification plan as presented. Second. For the discussion, all those in favor? Move the board of selectmen amend the FY18 classification plan as presented. Second. Right. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? 4 0. Thank you, gentlemen. If I could just ask you to take a five minute resource on recess, I'm going to attempt to okay. beat this up. We'll, uh, we'll stand. <laughs> Recess for five minutes. Thank you. you. Want to
bulk of it is liquor licenses, which the board has dealt with a couple times in the last two years, and I think you're you're fine with it. Uh, Kino licenses will be a new addition a little bit later on. I just wanted to literally, almost like a working group session, go through your current policy and see if there's any areas the board has concerns on. And I also um, have some comments from staff. So what's in front of us is what's the so Article there. Three licenses should be. Um, this is what you sent us last week. Yes, same thing, okay, same correct. exactly. But this is a, this is what it is as of now without any changes. Correct. Okay. Correct. Right. I wasn't sure if that. I've made no suggested changes at all. Um, there's a copy that actually Ivria uh, made some comments on. I think it was last October, sometime yeah. in the fall. Um, we'll get to those. Whoops! Well, there it goes. Did it restart? It's just gone. Yeah, it's off. I think it just did updates. What have you been watching, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we just uh, proceed with paper? Okay. Um, I have a copy. I don't have full copies. The board has hard copies, hopefully. Yeah, it's rebooting, so we'll see well, what, what it is. We've all got our computers open, so we're, yeah. okay. we're looking at it. Okay. Um, let's see. The first question, the first, I think everything is fine. <laughs> yeah. Fool me once, shame on updates. you. It's got good sound. <laughs> it's great when it works. I feel like I'm in a sitcom at some point. Um, mm -hmm. the, <laughs> the licenses are fine, 3.1, up until delegation to the town manager, uh, the authority to issue certain licenses. Um, a prior board spoke with a prior town manager about this uh, and never changed the language. Um, they had agreed that that was delegated to him until further notice, and there may have even been a motion to that effect in a meeting 10 years ago or 12 years ago. But he's not here. But he's not here. That's not what the policy says, so you should do it one of two things. Uh, follow the policy, which I don't have a problem with, and annually tell me whether you will or will not delegate you know certain licensing authority to my office which frankly is mostly Caitlin at this point uh, or we have to change the wording of this um, I think maybe a better practice is to just do it annually because that way if something has gone wrong you're not happy with you just like liquor license you have a chance to so we have the calendar when yeah. we do liquor licenses, for example. It probably should be done then because I think all of our licenses are on a calendar year, uh, not a fiscal year. I sometimes have to think about that. So it does make sense that either in November or December when you do liquor licenses in November or other licenses in December that you just add this in. Can we make that change now to run? Well, absolutely. You don't have to change the policy at all. That's what it says you should do. Uh, unless you wanted to add. I'm not seeing the citation here. Um, if you look at 316, <coughs> the policy says annually. The practice might right. be at the same time you do liquor, Got it. for exactly. example. It should be fine. I think doing it once a year while we do liquor is fine. Okay. Um, I like the idea that we take a look at what worked, what didn't work. There's one or two in here that I, we should go through it and see what the board thinks. But okay. Like 3 4, we know that. Um, 3.4, folks have come before us on motor vehicle licensing regards, I think it was fingerprinting and uh, yep. ph photographing. Mm -hmm. We don't have a lot of class one, two, or three motor vehicle licenses, and they don't turn over very often. So when it does, it's, a, it's enough of a special case where I'd, I'd be curious to see that, whereas um, the, the alcohol, we see it mostly because of the nature of that license. We have like 12 pages of taxi, and I don't think we even have any taxi services anymore in writing, but that as it may, Dan. We have liberty. Pretty entertaining, actually, yeah. if you read that. Yeah. I, I have a question regarding uh, taxi and livery vehicles. Is mm -hmm. there a definition either at state law or our, our own bylaw? It's right here in 3512, three, definition of livery. Correct. Well, I'm reading that, and I'm saying, how does that exclude an Uber or a Lyft vehicle? I was going to ask about that. Is that they? Oh. I'm, I, I'm assuming it's not our intent to regulate the, those vehicles. Correct. It's not your intent in the policy, and um, state law prohibits municipalities from regulating Uber. Okay. So you don't even really have the ability to. So if there's an Uber driver that picks up somebody in Reading and does something untoward, there's nothing this board can do to prevent that Uber driver from ever setting foot in Reading again. I don't want to say that because there may be other statutes criminal statutes or other things that we could look to, but 
the board is precluded by state law from a developing a policy that Uber drivers like register and fingerprint or anything that would yeah. restrict their ability to operate. How does that work, Gabriel? What 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 part of state? It must be fairly recent then. It is a new law. I think it was 2016, um, and I don't. The that provision was added into the law because, in part, Cambridge was trying to regulate Uber drivers right. uh, differently than taxi drivers. So, ended up getting state stuck. Okay. Any other questions? Um, the, the class one, two, three motor vehicles, I'd be yeah. curious to always have them come before us only because it probably is such a unique event and it's, it's in my mind, if it's a, one of the automotive dealers, I'd be curious to see them. I was going to ask, what is a class one, two, and three license? Well, let me, let me ask John to clarify. Um, when you s say that, do you mean first applications or renewals or both? Uh, first applications for certain. Okay. And um, I would say if there's any change of renewal. Where the circumstances have changed, if it's change if it's ownership, you mean either change in ownership, a change in, um, I guess this is where the subjectivity comes in. If no. it's if it's regular and customary, I'd say no, but if it's anything but that, change in ownership being an example, I'd be curious to see that singular one. The um, the policy uh, that the police have uh, developed is um, renewals. Folks that have been in town for a long time basically don't hassle them, right. renew it. Right. Um, but to have a careful look at, at, you know, as best you can just describe it, at situations that change and, and all new people. Um, right. I, right. I will say, though, that um, we also have a general bylaw that covers this. We, you know, the chief and I, the last two chiefs and I have talked about this a lot. I think we may need to go back to town meeting and actually change the bylaw because it says basically in black and white, you shall every year you shall, do you these shall, things. You shall, you shall, correct. And as a policy, we don't think it makes sense. And I remember Chief Cormier standing up and explaining why it makes sense, but we don't think it makes sense to fingerprint um, businesses that have been around for some time every single year. You've had some visits from those people. Yes, right. we have. And we've had some discussions with alter them. Cause the chief to come up with a little better strategy. Yeah, and maybe it doesn't exactly fit what, what the well, bylaws and, and says. The, and the question isn't don't don't never fingerprint them again because <clears throat> people do things. You know, just because you came into town clean 20 years ago doesn't mean you stu still are. Uh, but he proposed to do it less than annually, so either every two years or every three years, and that's why we just wanted to have an informal discussion as the computer keeps rebooting. So can I? Class one, two, and three motor vehicle license. What is that? Used cars. So no, you, like a used cars. car lot? Uh, could be. Yeah. yeah. Or it could be a body yeah. shop that sells cars. Yeah. So, I mean, so, so we anybody, have such places. anybody that just sells cars. Okay. You could even just sell one car or more than one. Right. Not a private residence. It would be a commercial yeah. property. Commercial. Yep. Yeah, so he needs the license in order to kind of yes. toot the car around and show exactly. people. So if you drive around town and look at many of our gas stations, many of them have this, not all, but if you just drive around Main Street, there are cars for sale, used cars for sale, in what looks like a repair shop, but it's, it's doing both. And is Class 1 an example of a full-fledged automotive dealer or no? That's still a repair facility. For some reason, I had in my head that Class 1 was the likes of a Honda Galley or okay. something like that. Yeah, I think so. Class two might be a used car dealer that um, had a smaller lot size. I know at one point there's a number of how many cars right. that are yeah. on the right. lot for sale. Yeah, I'd have to double check, but I know that they, you know, it, it starts at like the lowest, like a repair shop selling a few cars, right. and then to like a used lot, and then you know the full fledged dealer. Steve, you had a question. Yeah, I think you're right. So to clarify, if it was re just a re-up, you know, the, the language here says shall issue a license once a year. If it was no changes, like it would be issued. Um, I, I delegate that to the town manager. I'd be inclined to do it. If there was a change, I'd bring that singular case forward and just for conversation. It might be a, an ordinary conversation and we're done. But um, how does the board feel about that or any other topic here? Uh, are we kind of going all over? Yeah, yeah, and just just to be clear, we're okay. discussing ideas and thoughts, not wording. Correct. We'll work on that and come back to you. Correct. This is more: do we want to delegate it? And if so, do we want to delegate everything? And if not, what are the exceptions? 
I think common sense dictates that you do a lot of delegating here. Exactly. Because yep. state time government. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, with the exception of the liquor, that's yeah. yeah. Liquor, liquor is a different, yeah, right. you know, liquor liquor is a different thing. But the rest of this stuff, um, the more that we can delegate and still fulfill our fiduciary responsibilities, we should do it. I'm in the same place. Yeah. You see any exceptions, John? To delegation, I, I looked and I, you know, I read this thing all the way through, and I just uh, my first observation is delegation is the order of the day. I saw nothing wrong with what was going on here, and that we should do it. Um, the second thing was the comedy show about taxis. Um, Seven pages. Which was pretty. I was glad to know that I get that you know the selectmen can get people over sixty a discount on the taxi fares doing business in yeah. Reading, which is. Has it been 20 years since we've had a taxi stand? It's been more than 10, that's all I know. But there are a number of writing businesses that will pick you up and take you to the airport that's not a taxi stand. It's kind delivery. Of delivery. Yeah. So there are there are some. There's two, two I'm aware of. Yeah. You know, more two. than two? Yeah. They're not taxis. No. They're not taxis. No, you have to delivery. make an appointment. To Car service. Yeah. Um, the only other comment I had, which is more of a technical one, is in 7.3. <coughs> Dot two, it speaks to entertainment devices. But oh, hang on, you're way ahead of me. Sorry, not seven. <laughs> Three dot seven. Okay. Dot two, it talks about entertainment devices, but in the following 3.8, it speaks to automatic amusement devices. Yeah. What yeah. is the difference? All right, that, that is an area I wanted to spend some time on. Like pinball machines? Or? It might be, but they're so similar, uh, I can't tell the difference. Technology has evolved a lot faster than bureaucracy, not surprisingly. Um, Avery and I have not really had this discussion, but I almost want to take this apart and start all over both sections. I'll give you some examples. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to talk about stuff in public, but there's a new business going into town, down in Walker's Brook, that could have anywhere from one to, I don't know, 100 entertainment licenses, depending on how we interpreted this policy. Um, what I've agreed with with the landlord for the first, you know, tail end of this uh, calendar year is one. And then, you know, we may, and I said very clearly, you know, we may have a new policy and it may, you know, instead of $50 for the rest of the year, it could be a lot more next year. Um, it's, it's just a different kind of business. Um, I'll, I'll tell you about some of the conversation that my peers have. I, I won't say the towns, but one of our contiguous towns has a restaurant that we have that has those electronic checkout devices at your table mm -hmm. that also have games for the kids. Are those an entertainment device for 50 bucks each? Then you multiply 50 by every table. One town around us has interpreted it that way and is having some legal discussions with the entity. I've chosen to say, no, that's foolish. That's, well, that was never the intention of this policy. You know, that's uh, like a revenue grab. Absolutely. In my opinion. I, you know, I, think I don't like nickel and dime right. people. I think uh, we should have fees in the yeah. way that they, what's reasonable and what makes common sense. So that, that's why I suggest, honestly, that both these sections, you just let us work on a complete overhaul. I don't know if you have up-to-date policies or yeah. other towns. Yes, okay. we've been working on entertainment license policies okay. for many communities. It's a, definitely it's a hot button issue yeah. right now. And right. I would advise that um, the board authorize Bob in our office to take a look at this in more detail. What was the original intent of the difference? I, I understand the current is kind of... Technology's yeah. overtaken. What was the original intent? TV, TV screens primarily. What was um, the other then? If one was TV screens, the other was a pinball machine kind yes. of thing? Yes. Uh, I'm trying to think. The Pac Man. Yeah, like yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah exactly. Okay. And right. there are additional entertainment Which licenses. I know it doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> I see. <laughs> and there are, are also uh, two additional types of entertainment licenses that are not reflected in your policy. So, like a, a pool table, there's a specific license for that, which isn't reflected here. Uh -oh, um, how about foosball? Uh, that would fall under air, air hockey. Regular. Yeah, so we have a foosball and heroes. We have those now. items. In, yes, in, I know. I know we do. We have yeah. played those places that have those. Right. Um, so I think there's some tweaking that we can do here to right. make it come into uh, alignment with the law as well. And, and then there are licenses for live entertainment as well. Right. So the way your policy is drafted, it seems like it just applies to devices, but the statute that's referenced here actually applies to both live entertainment and devices and then there's another whole set of there's another statute which isn't referenced in your policy that deals with like events like carnivals so um we can make sure that it's broad enough to cover all of those 
Is there some I obvious connection between live events and devices that I that it's mm -hmm. it's that they were in the same it's entertainment. section? That's the only That's connection. Okay. It's just that they're entertainment. And and live means like a concert. Exactly, okay. and they're like regulated by where the well, event. You know, Bun Raddies has a guitar player that right. comes in. Mm -hmm. Okay, All right. John. I think that um, my review of these is that they're out of date, and I really think we could spin in circles only to come back to you to say mm -hmm. that we, you know, did the music stop at the right place and did we sit down correctly? We have a right. license I mean, for it. You know, right. the chances of us doing that are slim. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I just think, you know, you, you said a minute ago, I would prefer that we turn this over to you guys to come back with an up-to-date finished product, recommended finished product for us to look at, because otherwise we're going to no, I agree. We're gonna the, circle this I thing. agree. Uh, the other thing is I'm not personally interested in nickel and diming uh, oh, no. yeah. members of the community. I mean, th there may be the means to do it, but there's no, val there's no value served in my mind in doing so. Well, that sample that Bob brought up is just... Although, I mean, you know, if, if there is a difference between, you know, the iPad at, at Applebee's, right, there's 50 of them, and then an arcade with 50 machines. That, I mean, I, I would look at that as a difference. If you've ever seen a, grand, a grandchild on one of those things, I'm not sure who's making more money. You know, <laughs> but at least it's keeping the grandkid quiet. <laughs> In either instance. There's a couple different fee structures that we've seen certain communities use, so we can put forth a couple options, and, you know, we can talk about what's going to fit Reading's needs best. Has state law kept up with the proliferation of technical devices? At Not all? in this area. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we have them on gas pumps now. Yeah. yeah. Well, your pump up, you can watch it. Yeah, well, the entertainment well, laws. Right here. Yeah, you bring your own device now, right? right. We just bring wireless. You can play on your own device. But what do you right. do with those? I, I have no right, idea. so the entertainment laws only apply if there's entertainment in an establishment with a common victualler's license. Okay. So if you're going to a restaurant or if you're paying to see the entertainment. So that sort of stuff is, is restricted. So when you have like at, um, they sometimes have like trivia night at one of the bars. Good is, question, yeah. Is that covered? I mean, that's entertainment. Someone's yeah. coming in and doing it. I don't know if it's a good question. of the realm is passing hands. Mm -hmm. but, uh, so in some communities, they are requiring an entertainment license for that. Other communities have chosen not to. Um, we can talk about that and see what fits Reading. Okay. You know. okay. This is one of those things that will never end if we keep talking. Yeah. So. yeah. I, I just have one question. 3.3, yeah. um, I think it is. Ped, do, do peddlers still exist? Hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have a hot dog man over in Wakefield. What do you mean door they to would door? show up in great number in uh, the Fall Street Fair if you didn't have this section. Do we, do we, how many have we issued? Do we know how many? You, you usually get one a year at the Friends and Family Day. Yeah, okay. Oh, that's for, like to do the... The, the lady that oh. comes and does the... Um, balloons the or balloon something. Animals yeah. and oh, okay. So we have I, one. Okay. While we're on yeah. that, uh, I know we're not wordsmithing, but uh, there's a little discontinuity here. We, uh, in some of these uh, peddler's license uh, conditions, we say minimal impact, and others we say no negative impact. Okay. For, for instance, seven says peddlers use may have yeah, no, no negative, negative impact. impact on retail. Well, how do you? I mean, right. Why don't we say minimal there? Yeah. It would make much more sense to yeah. say minimal. So I, um, I don't think we need a motion, but I'm in favor of having. Uh, but I, I still have a few more questions on sections to ask you, if you don't mind. Please. Um, All right. So three seven and three eight. That's that's ours. How about three nine? Uh, the general bylaws do prohibit retail sales before six a.m. Um, I haven't heard a complaint for a long time, knock on wood, um, from the general public. We only have a handful that are asking. And don't they come for a variance to us? <coughs> They've come to you, yes. And it's done yearly, isn't and it? I wouldn't board. ever yeah. suggest the town manager do that. Um, they need to come to you. I, I think that's, I, I do think that needs to stay with us just because okay. we found in the past <laughs> yep. coming with us has raised certain issues with the public. Right. Which were legitimate issues, and they, they were able to, to work to. them out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, where there's been a crowd, it's usually been on this topic, and it's actually mostly had a favorable outcome, right? Maybe I think it, each time yeah. it's yeah. it's had a negotiated outcome yeah. that everybody's happy. And the value is in the process of working that through for everyone to see. So, so that'd okay. be another one. So so yeah. leave that with us. Right. We'll if we have to wordsmith it, we will. It looks long to me, but it it's not broken. I guess is the point. Right. No. Um, Three ten. Um, 
Now, that, that's a hot topic. Actually, that was another one I wanted to suggest come forward, only because every that's another one where every instance is going to be different. The outline, the number of tables, the time of day, the intrusion on the space. That's probably another one that's going to create a lot of public interest in folks coming in and saying, I'd like to say something for okay. or against. That doesn't get, happen that often. but That could get bigger rather than smaller yeah. yes. with our change in zoning. Yes. I yeah. agree. And likely will. Although we might want to make, you know, if, you know, when it goes before, you know, CPDC, you know, because a lot of the restaurants that have outdoor seating are not on the sidewalk. They've got dedicated spaces like um, uh, Bun Ratties and the, um, <coughs> the other one, I forget. The old Grumpy Doyles. Uh, built more in Maine. Built more in Maine. Yeah. They have outdoor seating, but it's not impeding the sidewalk. But this is specifically on sidewalks. Right. right. So, I mean, you know. Like um, Demia Timichi's or. Uh, yes. Timichi's is on the sidewalk, and I think also the yogurt place. Orange Leaf Zanga. 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 Yep. Um, Dan. When we require uh, professionally drawn plans, that, that is an imposition on the applicant that they need to retain the services of someone that will draw them up. Is there something maybe short of that we could do for a seating plan? Does it require professionally drawn? Or are you hesitant to, to relax that? I would be hesitant to relax that if alcohol was being served. I'd uh, want a thorough review, but other than that, I, I don't see the problem. Y you know, you're going to have handicapped accessibility issues if you don't get measurements exactly right, but do you really need an architect for that? I don't know. Do you have alcohol being served on public sidewalks? Uh, we, we had one down on Haven Street that okay. was, yes. Not on Main Street. Oh, no, Portland Pie drawn. did. Plan drawn to scale. Oh. I mean, that would Isn't imply it needs to be. Where are you? What number? Yeah. It's oh, yeah. item three under application for uh, the outdoor scene. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, I, I, I guess professionally drawn could also be in how you interpret it. What does professionally drawn mean? Does it mean a PE? Does that mean well, somebody that's who's at harassment? the extreme? That's what I would say it means. Yes, is an architect. Uh, do we need to put them through that expense? I don't think so. If it's proportional and it's complete, now, now you have right. to judge what that, that means. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah, if someone wants to throw two tables in front of a store on Main Street, yeah. you have to hire an engineer. Let's well, on the other hand, if they bring in a paper napkin with a crayon, and well, yeah. they have. <laughs> Sometimes that's just that's, that's all you need. <laughs> Look, I think you can leave this I'll to common sense. Stuff. All right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, let's not impose excessive costs to these people. Yeah. I'm, I'm exactly there. And the thing is, too, we also don't want to discourage. I mean, the whole idea is of creating life downtown. Yeah, if right. there's a couple of seats out there serving coffee, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to discourage that. Bob, did you have any other t areas you wanted to highlight? Um, well, A-frame's the last one. I think that's 310. Let's find it. Sandwich boards? Yeah, you saw that presentation today, Barry, and noticed there's not a lot of A-frames, 311. Yeah. Oh. Um, that's oh. something the town has uh, taken quite seriously in the past, and certainly my predecessor did. And, um, you know, there's, there's two sides to everything, but the side to enforce this is um, uh, handicapped accessibility more than anything else, safety. There's other reasons to do it too, optics, you know, desirability, whatever, but that that's my reason. Um, this is another thing that the town can't possibly proactively enforce or police. We can only deal with people who complain and then do the best we can. Um, there are always going to be businesses that put out an A-frame sign on a Friday night and take them in on a Sunday night and there's no opportunity for the town to have really done anything unless it has caused an issue of public safety. Any sense of how popular, I, I just have never paid attention. Are these widely pop wildly popular? Um, Peter used to have Gene go out on uh, December 31st with him and go to every establishment that had an A-frame sign permit and inspect the joint for every possible violation they could have on anything. I've chosen to use my New Year's Day <laughs> differently. Um, I think this is another common sense thing. Let's use our A-frame signs with common sense. I don't think this community generally, first of all, the sign pollution in this town is very good. You drive around in almost any other town, the signage is worse, and my tastes aren't particularly good, but I can still tell you that. My tolerance for more signs in this town would be high. I don't know that that's the general perception of the town, however. Isn't there like one on Haven Street right now? Probably. It seems like, it, it just, I, I don't go up and down. An A-frame, you mean? Yeah. I don't go up and down and say, oh, what an eyesore, exactly. or oh, what a, I look at it and go, oh, there's a sale. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, I can get two bottles for the 
price of water. Yeah, the, the issue again becomes if, if there's a sidewalk of a certain size and the A-frame signs in the way and you can't get a wheelchair by, that's yeah. a problem. If it just takes a little bit of dodging around. There's three ifs in that statement too. But the way this policy is written and was enforced was fairly strict in the past. Would you propose to simplify it? Depends on your appetite, but I, I certainly can come back with uh, Gene's help and simplify it greatly. This is another issue that, that causes undue discussion with business owners that's really not terribly valuable. Cooperative common sense. Yes, yes, exactly. You look under size and location, look at the bullets under seven. Maybe, right. shall be, must be, yeah. shall be, must be, must be, shall be, maybe, must be. He needs an overhaul. Stop. Also, uh, the Supreme Court ruling, didn't they rule out any discrimination on basis of use? Uh, it's content, is it? We have I think it's well, number 14 says political statements or messages right. are prohibited. Right. Can you put that in there anymore? I, mean, I wouldn't necessarily want to not. see them, but can you restrict them that way? Right. We would want to yeah. review this to make sure it's in conformity with the new. And just one example. Of I'd be fine at delegating that in the okay. entirety unless there was some uproar, in which case it would come back. Is However, I mean, honestly, does there need to be 16? Sections to this thing? That's I mean, I meant. come it's on. It's unbelievable. It's over regulated. 28, John, you forgot the last page. Oh, it's God good. almighty. <laughs> no, they can't possibly be in need for that. <laughs> it just can't. All that for 50 bucks a year. 25 for Respect. renewal. It's only 50 the first year. <laughs> Not to mention, look, we're working hard with rezoning. Yeah. We, and, you know, we have a person in place that is being paid to sell us to the outside world. You come in and look at this thing and you go, really? Yeah. <laughs> so there's that dimension. I think in general, um, one of the hardest things to do in any, in any business, but I think especially in government, is um, retool and uh, declutter. What don't we need to do? We need to know how do we reorganize? And our bylaws and our policies sometimes Take years to catch up. This is an opportunity. Yeah, they try to, to cover every <coughs> contingency, and then you know, can't. six months we down can't. the road, it's now it's it's now obsolete because something new came. And up. I think we need to we need to get in step with the fact that we're in a dynamic world that changes rapidly, and to try to overregulate everything, as Barry points out, to you know, button everything up in every eventuality is I think is ludicrous, um, and it sends a very bad message to the people that we're trying to attract here. Uh, what recourse is there if, if we say, even if we left it alone mm -hmm. and we approved it and there was an objection unrelated to handicap access is, and, and it was material, it was an oversight on our part, is there any recourse or no, you wait till the next year and you take it up? It's like hypothetical with a lot of ifs. So if we've issued a permit and someone objects to the fact there's a sign for certain Correct. reasons. Or there is legitimately a problem. Well, if they're following your policy, no, the objection compliant. doesn't matter, if no. you will. If they've thought of something we didn't think about in the policy that might be legitimate, just bring it back to the board and say, look, that will brings up a good point. Probably, yeah. And you know, having 28 okay. things is not going to change that. No, it and, makes and, it worse. And as soon as we do that, someone will come out with one of those A-frame things that's electronic that changes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it dances in the sidewalk. Or something. What's hanging so it doesn't touch the sidewalk. So, uh, you know. It's even better. Board. And it's painted with a laser, so there's not even used anything to be the Retirement work. It used to be the sandwich board had a guy attached to it. That's right. The 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 bell. Are those regulated? If Dan and I are going to take that on as a retirement income project. So the last section I wanted to ask you about, um, Air, Airbnb. Is there any appetite of the board to go down that path? Is That's a question we do get every couple of weeks. We have, we have applications. I don't think we have any policy or any ability to do anything with that right now. Is there any state language that would restrict? <coughs> Not currently, no. <coughs> it, it, it is, from what I know about Airbnb and where it is in places, in, in, in other places, um, Reading is a prime location for, and we have a hotel tax. And, and you we can don't have a hotel, that. but we have a hotel tax. But that can only be in Reading. <laughs> so, just a few points on Airbnb. There's a couple different ways to regulate it. Um, one is through general bylaws, and one is through zoning. 
so there's a lot of complicated issues associated with both of those mechanisms. Um, and I think Ray and I were talking about this, and you know, I think it would, if the town and the board does decide that they want to look at the options, it would be a good idea to have our office kind of explore them in a little bit more detail before we present to you what I think it would be, would be I, I, I think it, from, for a variety of different things, from, from selling the town to revenue to um, just putting us um, uh, on the map, it also helps people um, who might be struggling in their homes to make some additional money. Uh, I, I think we should definitely look at this. Um, I, I think it would be, it, it's happening all around us. For us to say, no, we're not gonna look at it, I just think it's foolish. Okay, and it will probably be multiple conversations. Um, okay. I think it's a longer discussion. Are you seeing some of your other clients addressing this? Some of our other clients have talked about it. Um, no one's taken the step to actually implement something, but communities have investigated and kind of looked at different options. If you get on to Boston or Cambridge, there's nothing there? They've definitely started. Boston has oh, a lot of regulation Boston. right now. Um, so some of our other communities have thought about prohibiting it, and so that doesn't seem right off the bat, the way Reading wants to go. Um, so I think it's just gonna be a little bit different for so each community. if I wanted just to open up my home for an Airbnb, there's nothing that the town of Reading can say that I can't do that. Depends on what your zoning is. So if you're not, arguably, it's a commercial use of your property. I'm, I'm in a residential area. Right, so arguably. Depends, depends if we know. Yeah. Or your neighbors let us know. In fact, so it could be happening right now. We don't absolutely. Know. I wouldn't be surprised right. at all. Now, doesn't zoning then get in the way of anything else we do for the same reason? Right, that's why I think it'd be good to delegate this to us yeah, and yeah, give right. us the authority yeah. to kind right. of explore it a little bit more. One, one thought is to treat it under the guise of an accessory apartment. That's you one option. A, spe a special case of an accessory apartment. Right, so that's one option. Some communities have looked at that if there's a standalone structure on the property, that that structure could be used for Airbnb, but not a room in a home. So yeah. I think, you know, like okay. I said, there's a lot of options here. Boy, technology's really made it complex. Well, it's surely better, but complex. It is hard to know what should be what should we be ready for. What's next? I don't know. I'm not even sure how you well, the thing is that we you know we'll just deal with it as it comes. Yeah. I mean, we don't have to. That's why I think your amusement, you know, electronic device stuff. That's important. That's all changed, and that's going to continue to change. Yeah, I, yeah. As I thought about it and talked about it with staff, I couldn't come up with any other wide areas to add to your license policy other than. We've discussed other than Kino, which is the next agenda item. So, all right, thank you. I have a good, clear understanding of sort of where you want to go on some of these. We'll come back to you. Good. Um, the Airbnb discussion will probably involve other staff coming to you and having a discussion, public safety being one of them. Okay. Um, Nobody's next. advertising in Reading at the moment. I know. <laughs> come to Reading. We were just kidding. <laughs> In front of you, uh, I, I'm sorry I can't show it, is the Town of Reading Kino procedures. It's just a two-page draft. If the public's interested, I have extra copies here. And um, I'll turn this over to Ibria. I don't know much about Kino other than I did get on the uh, state's website and see what our surrounding communities did in terms of uh, lottery Kino to go and Kino. Mm -hmm. And if you look at North Reading, I, I was a little surprised, although maybe I shouldn't have been, that 90% of the Kino licenses are on Route 28, and there's a couple in other parts of town. So they're heavily trafficked areas. Quite a number of them, too. And virtually everyone that has a lottery license has Kino. I couldn't think of or couldn't identify more than one or two that didn't in North Reading. Yep. So even though you've only seen um, you know, a handful of interest. I, I think you should discuss this as if it's going to be a, a widely used thing. And as I understand it from Ivria, there's two types of licenses, if you will, and I'm sure she'll get into that, how the state sees them. So the state issues Kino licenses. It's not a license that the Board of Selectmen has the authority to right. issue. So we'll start there just sort of with the ground. Um, there are, I guess we could call them two different types of Kino licenses. A, a lottery agent, that's a, an establishment, generally they're package stores, they'll hold a section 15 package store license to sell alcohol. 
will obtain, um, will become a lottery agent and they can sell different types of lottery products, one of which is Kino or Kino to go. So every time a, the state lottery commission receives an application from a lottery agent for Kino, they're going to send that application to the board of selectmen of the municipality in which the, the establishment is located. And the, and, the and the municipality has 21 days to object to the issuance of the lottery, of the Kino license to the lottery agent. If during that 21 day period, the board does object, then the only way the state could issue the license is if they find that issuance is in the public interest. So there's a process there where the locality does have some ability to object. The other type of Kino licenses are issued to restaurants. Most of them have a Section 12 liquor license. And the way the statute is written is a little different. The board is not notified of the application, nor are they given an opportunity to object. However, in practice, the Lottery Commission does, in fact, notify boards and allows them an opportunity to participate in the process. But it's not built into the statute in the same way. Is that to say, practically speaking, from what you've discovered, they're treated identically, although the statutes read differently? So I had a few conversations with individuals at the state. Um, this is the first community that I've dealt with Kino. We don't have, we haven't experienced it sure. in other communities, so I can't say from experience, but according to the individuals I spoke with yeah. at the commission, that's what they tend to do. Um, so what we've, in the in the policy that I've, I've provided to you, Can I've- stop you there for oh, a yeah. second? Now, are convenience stores treated any differently than either of those two? So convenience stores would become a lottery agent and then they would they would obtain the Kino license in the first process that I talked so about. So it would be just as though they were a package store, but right. you know, in this case they don't happen to have a liquor Right. Place. So a lottery agent can have can be a, just a regular convenience store. We have store. many such lottery agents right, right. now. Right. You do, correct. Now. Yeah. Many of which are providing Kino to go, so that's where you buy the ticket and then you check it on your phone or on a yeah. computer later. Um, so if those if those lottery agents that are currently operating Kino to go want to operate Kino, they would apply to the state, and the state would notify you. You would have 21 days to object if you wanted to, and then the state would either issue the license or hold the hearing. Um, and it's what was really interesting for me in the discussions with the state is that this is a, it's an age a state agency, but it's a business for them. So you know they look at it and they say, does it make sense from a business standpoint to have? They have the right to reject. That exactly, right. Um, so what some communities do is when they remove the blanket objection to Kino, like Reading did, they contact the state and they say, well, there are a few conditions that we would like to see. Obviously, the state doesn't have to follow that, but some conditions that the woman I spoke with talked about were making sure that all of the monitors face inward so that individuals don't sit in the parking lot. So that's one that we could recommend that the state incorporate into any license that's issued right. here. Um, there may be others that the board could think of, and we can definitely talk about them, but that was the one that was brought to my attention. Is, is there anything in there that says proximity to a school or a church or a, mm -hmm. you know? There isn't anything built into the statute. The regulations also don't contain anything like that. So if Reading, if the board makes a determination that it's not in the public interest to have it within so many feet of a school or a place where children, you know, typically yeah, congregate. There's a, yeah, there's a congregation. Right. We can request that the Lottery Commission <coughs> take that into consideration. And so the policy, the way I drafted it um, is in the application, I put a provision where applicants for Kino need to submit the application to the board as well. So that will help in a situation where the commission maybe forgets to notify the town. At least we'll have a copy of the application and we can communicate with them. Um, and then in section five, we have the basic conditions. So this is what I was talking about. We can make some suggestions to the lottery commission about what we believe would serve the public interest here in Reading. Like I said, you know, facing the monitors inward, making sure that it complies with local zoning, maybe a certain distance from a school or a park. Um, but obviously, everything 
is up, you know, the board should feel free to discuss what they think is best. Is there any limitation to those two types of businesses you described earlier? Hypothetically, if a gas station that sells, uh, you know, sundries, could, yeah. they, could they do it as well? So a gas station could apply to become a lottery agent. Same, same path. Right, and then once they're a lottery agent, then they can we sell the various we, products. We, again, have such businesses in town. Yeah. Okay. In terms where would of they sit? I mean, it's like, yeah, that's, that's the other. Well, lottery yeah. agents can sell anything from a scratch ticket to Kino, to Kino tickets. So just because a lottery agent is permitted to sell scratch tickets doesn't mean they would uh, be able to obtain a Kino license. One requirement that the commission speaks about is that having seating. So they're not going to issue a Kino license to establishment that doesn't have there. adequate yeah. seating. So, and some of them, you know, combination gasoline convenience stores have space to do such a thing if they wanted to do it. What does adequate seating mean? Good question. <laughs> Whatever the commission deems in their interest to be adequate. They look at this as a, a, a product that they're selling. So it really depends on the si size of the establishment. They'll come out and do a site visit and they'll make a determination. I, I mean, like, so a convenience store that has like two or three seats with a couple of monitors mm -hmm. wants to do Kino, mm -hmm. but it's in a strip mall that has somewhat limited parking. Mm -hmm. The other business owners, you know, who rely on that parking turning over for their customers might object or have a problem because some guy is sitting there for an hour and a half mm -hmm. playing Kino. Right. So, you know, that becomes more of a local concern than it is for the state. State wants to s sell licenses. Um, you know, we want to make sure that, you know, um, that it's not encumbering any other businesses. So right. would we have the ability then, uh, or could we write it in here that, you know, I, I noticed something here about public hearings. Um, can we require anybody that wants a Kino license, we do a public hearing and we then ask these questions, you know, or, you know, is it, you know, so that uh, other people can then come and say, listen, that's great for them, but it doesn't help me. Right, so for the two types of Kino licenses that I talked about, the first type that goes to lottery agents, the package stores, the convenience stores, if, if the board is going to object to that license within the 21 day period, they have to hold a public hearing. So the reason that, it, that you saw that requirement here is that that's the only process. If the board objects without a hearing, the commission won't view it as a valid objection. So we have to object first in a meeting to just to get the hearing. Oh, As no. a, oh, sorry. Uh, uh, no, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm sort of thinking out loud. So we have to kind of raise our hand and say we object to kind of stop the clock a little bit. So then in order to have the hearing, to gather the evidence yes. for us to decide whether or not, you know, we think this is a, a good use as opposed to, um, I mean, I don't want to object first. I want to be able to, you know, okay, you have a hearing. It, this is fine. Nobody, you know, it doesn't impact on any other businesses. This is good for the store owner to say okay this is great we have no objections so mm -hmm. is that so unfortunately there's no way to stop the clock you have to object within 21 days so that means within that 21 day period you receive the application you receive notice of the application and you have to hold a hearing and then you have to have your hearing you have to make a decision and if you decide to object you have to send your notice to the Commission that you're objecting within that 21 day period. It's a really tight clock. So, so operationally then, if we wanted to have some type of a say or some type of kind of a vetting, we have to automatically object to every application just so that we can get the people in here in time to just gather the information to make a determination. No, uh, you don't actually have to object right away. What you need to do is Bob will receive notice of the application, you schedule a hearing on the application, the applicant comes in, you have those discussions you were talking about, and if at the end of that hearing, oh, okay, you yeah. decide that it's not okay, a good application. Was, and you object. Right. right. Okay. But that, your that you have to, that you, makes more sense. You yeah. can't sit on it. Yeah. Right. Like no, the application yeah. comes in. He, well, that's, 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 that's good. I think it's Because it's 21 days. It's 21 days, so it's a really short time because you need to have the, cl the hearing needs to close. You need to vote. You need to draft your written decision, and that written decision needs to go to the state within 21 days. So even though it's tight, though, at least it's not forcing us to object to everything first. Correct. We before hearing, we even have a hearing for everything right. first. Yeah. Which is kind of, you know, there are not so many that that would be a burden right. on it. Mm -hmm. 
and there's there's a couple other options one is that you could have a hearing on every single application or you could delegate the authority to Bob to make an initial decision as to whether to schedule a hearing or not some uh, communities do it differently. That, that was going to be my question whether the board wanted to in the policy have some description of when a hearing would be called or not or just leave it to me so you have one in your example there there's one such place that could be categorized as a strip mall in Reading that I can think of. Yep. And I, and I think that's it, one. Um, and there are three businesses in that, you know, in that group. So, I mean, if you wanted to have a hearing on that one, fine. I mean, it strikes me that most of the people that are going to be making these applications are going to be doing business pretty much the same way they've always done business. They've added another product line, essentially, is what they've done. Almost every one of them, with potentially, with maybe one exception that I can think of, your strip mall exception, um, have you know, they're either on their own premises or there's already you know parking regulations in effect in and around their businesses, you know, for turnover. You know, Dan, you're here. I think you've got you've got parking spaces in front of your business right. that are already regulated to turn over Correct. to protect you and the other businesses. So right. that um, I also have some parking behind my store um, for customers. So um, I, I I guess what I'm saying is I hear you. You know, I hear what you're saying, Barry, about the ability to be able to weigh in as needed, but I. I hesitate for us to overthink this, you know. I mean, it's pretty much these guys are. I mean, right. I, I, I mean, like the idea of the screens in here. Right. Uh, the, the only different, the only difference here on this product is that it's um, it's not a buy and go. It's a buy and stay. Right. Um, you know, if they have it at a uh, at a restaurant or oh, no, we're not. We're not actually. This doesn't um, come into the pour establishment pouring. It, it only deals yeah, with, uh, deal with that. right. So in those cases, they already you know people are already staying. This is the one where the impact is on parking. Really, I mean that's you know that parking. As I said, I think there's only one place where there's shared par parking, and you already can't park there. <laughs> the more operative question is, I think you're not going to notice the issues on day one. You're going to notice it mm -hmm. on, on day 361. In which case, the license is already issued. You can't pull it. You're done. Right, but then you know there's a renew. These things renew all the time. So I, I wanted to ask every that question, um, where the state's the licensing authority. What are the grounds for not renewing a Kino license? Because the board may have input again, but the state may or may not care. There's nothing built into the statute that gives municipalities the authority to participate in that process. So our only chance to weigh in is in the beginning. That's what it sounded like, unless there's a real problem. But even then, and a real problem doesn't mean parking. <laughs> well, it's something much worse. So there's no licensing element that we play in after the initial. So there's really no constructive way, if there is a problem, other to have a constructive engagement. Well, every one of these places has a business license that we issue or don't issue every every. Well, I don't know if it's every year, but. Depends. If they have an alcohol license, yes, absolutely. Common Vic license, yes, otherwise, not necessarily. The town clerk may issue a business certificate or whatever. Every four years. I mean, how many do we expect, uh, you know, to actually apply? North Reading has somewhere on the order of 20 plus. I think in the beginning you're going to have a handful. You can see three to four in the first year and then maybe one, one, or, two for sure. one or two a year after that. Who knows where the ceiling is? <coughs> now, yeah. where are you stuck, Barry? No, I'm not stuck. I think I, I'm not. I, I think it's. I have no objection to Kino or no objection to any you know uh, a, a product that people want. I just think that it you know if it's if it's doing something that will um, sort of impact the neighbors, it's something that we should have some type of a say over and really the only way to do it is when they initially come in because really after that it's done never and if it's that. three or four does it hurt to kind of just you know come in and don't call it a hearing it's a casual conversation um, 
you know, maybe we have to make it a hearing so that if there are people that are in the neighborhood that have some questions, that then it becomes a conversation. And we say, great, bless it, and, and move on. You know, um, I just don't want to. I, I just don't want to give out a license and then find out that, you know, and then and then you know, six months later, the place is packed because the neighbors are upset about this, that, or the other, and we didn't look at it. That's first that. of all, we don't give out the license. That's not all we can do is object. Or, or, or we all we can do is, it, is, is, is raise our potential objection. So we don't, I mean, we've now lifted the, the obstruct, we've lifted the iron curtain. Right. right. Okay, so that's been lifted. So going forward, we can object on a case by case basis for a reason. When you stop to think about who would potentially use Keno, and you talk about the neighbors, are you talking about the commercial neighbors or are you talking about the residential oh, neighbors? Probably both. I mean, uh, well, there are no residential neighbors, really. I mean, who are the residential neighbors? Not according to no, I mean, if there's like within, you know, a three or four block area around, I mean, I don't, I, I don't really know where these are going. So that's the problem is we don't know what's going to happen. And by the time you do, it'll probably be too late. And so your best bet is to try to talk to the. Let's not forget that one of our goals in, in our earlier discussions was to try to, in the case of a number of businesses here in town, um, we're trying to give them another opportunity to succeed. Absolutely. No, no, so, no you know, if agree. they are packing the house, God love them. That's what they, you know, that's what they want to do. No, but, but if they're packing the house and the guy next door is inconvenienced, you know, that's a that's a that should be a concern of ours, and, and I'm not saying it will. I just don't want to. I just don't want to give up our uh, our one chance to kind of um, you know ask those questions and, and get those reassurances because you know obviously you know we represent everybody and sometimes there's conflicts. I, I, I can't envision too many of them here, but it, if we sort of give up our right to sort of to hold a hearing, just to essentially to have people have a conversation so that we feel happy the neighbors feel happy the owner feels happy you know well, we've done our due diligence we've done our job and hopefully everybody's happy we could clearly you know application comes in and Bob could schedule it would have to schedule it. next meeting it next meeting it may not whatever that fit. is and if we just did that as a matter of course what the public needs to understand is we are not issuing or denying this license it is not in our purview, and uh, you know I, I think we could create a false impression with no, the public. We're, we're doing a due diligence. <laughs> okay. You know, I mean that's I mean, and 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 that could be a five-minute conversation, um, but you know we've satisfied that part of it, um, giving people the opportunity to weigh in. But if you call for a public hearing, it's a public hearing, so now you have the expense of the public hearing, whatever that is. I know that there's a, an expense involved every time. And then you also open the hearing, and I I don't know what the expectations are going to be of those people that come in. Well, we'll just um, tell them. <laughs> uh, I don't know how Kino works, but typically I get legal documents that are dated <coughs> as long as a week to ten days since they were legally sent. I don't know how that'll play into the 21 days. They're supposed to send it by certified mail. That should help. But we get different legal documents so that don't get are not Friday. right away. <laughs> well, and you know, to the extent the board meets every two weeks, this probably works most of the time. But it will not work all the time. Or you may have to be called for a special meeting. Just to yeah, I mean that's out of. I mean that's kind of. Is there any difference in Reading with our Friday closure in the way it's got? Is it business days within the town or business days period? Probably calendar days. It's calendar right? days. You know, the other thing the board can do is is delegate it. Let's all learn together. Maybe one does get by. I'm for that personally. I, I, you know, I we can't possibly predict everything. No, I know. Right. I'll you know I'll listen to all of you, and if there's any certain types of things you want me to watch out for, I will. Um, well, yeah. I, again, I, I'm I'm not trying to be disruptive. I, yeah. I, I, I'm just I'm just you know we're doing. We're opening this up. It's new. We don't know how it's going to go. Um, we certainly want to help out uh, our business owners, but you know, there's the unintended consequences. We talk about that all the time. Dan, and I just we don't want to give that. We up. must have some pretty good operational history from North Reading. Uh, 
Are we aware of any problems they've had? In I've never asked. I will. We could ask tomorrow. Okay. Uh, they're coming in. Interesting to know how much business we've lost to North Reading over the course of a period of time that we've is what I had the Iron Curtain down. I'm, I'm I would venture a guess that it's large. I would also note that uh, a number of our convenience store owners have been impacted by recent decisions by town boards regarding products they can no longer sell to you know, flavored tobacco products being one of them. Uh, I view this as a, a way to make up for some of that. Well, this should be independent. I understand it may make it up, but this is really an independent right. decision. It is, but uh, I think we should take it into consideration. Um, the one operative question for the board is the appetite to um, support or, or uh, decline to support Kino to go. So Kino is the deal where you walk in, you get your numbers, right. you look at the screen, you depart at some time later. Kino to go, you depart immediately, and I guess over have that now. We already have, have it. So we have yeah. it all over I'm town. Sorry, yeah. What's new about that? So, yeah. no, uh, um, so Kino to go, you already allow. Yeah, um, right. So you should be receiving notices when individual establishments are applying that for would, a Kino to go yeah. license. Have we ever gotten such a, a I notice? We I have Kino to go. In I can never not remember any. It may be when it initially started. It, it exists in certain businesses. Sure. And it's uh, like buying a scratch ticket. You, you yeah, I mean, have, has anybody heard a complaint? Have we had the police called? Have we had a public safety issue? It hasn't risen to my level. That doesn't mean nothing has happened. So, but the keynote to go is just like you buying a scratch ticket or a gallon of milk. It's the yeah. same thing. Yeah, there there's, people there's no the definition of what to go means. Counter. Leave, come back. I don't That's know. An yeah, yeah. I guess you could stand there and look at your phone, <laughs> and that would you would not be enjoined from doing that. Oh, that's true. And then you in, would. In theory, you're supposed to exit the premises. That that was the discussion a prior board had, because there was concern about. Well, what if they just keep coming back? Well, come on. <laughs> are we going to start putting a clock on how Honestly, long they have to I stay mean, out? What are yeah. we doing here? That's, yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, come on. John, I'm just asking what the board's uh, desire is. That's all. Oh, yeah. Do you want this to apply as a policy to Keno? Go was uh, yeah. I, I Sorry, know. it is drafted just to apply to Keno right, right yeah. now. So okay. we can. If it ain't broken. That's totally fine. Okay. Uh, is there any other decisions we need to make tonight? I, I had a broad question I wanted to wait until now. Yep. Um, some of the financial technology in, in our industry has evolved such that we can start tying the issue of licenses to other behaviors, such as not paying your taxes, not paying your water bills. Really? And we couldn't do that before. <laughs> the technology wasn't there to do it easily. Um, what's the board's appetite and what does the law allow uh, more broadly on licenses? If a property is in arrear on taxes, water bills, whatever. With yeah. regard to licensing in With general? With regard to renewing not licenses just, or issuing Kino, licenses or, you know, does the board have any legal standing to say no to a Keno license because someone hasn't paid their water bill? My guess is with Keno, probably not because it's probably, a state yeah. license. Yeah, this one probably not because it's a state license. I know that it applies to permits, that statute yeah. you're thinking of. I'm not sure off the top of my head if it applies okay. to license. That's something I can okay. get back to. But I, I want you to think about that because we've never discussed it on purpose because the technology was too hard. It's now possible. So um, if uh, I could, when, when a tax bill goes delinquent, mm -hmm. how long are we talking now? <clears throat> 60 days, 90 days? Yeah. Uh, I was thinking cycles. More water bills. So water bills are, are by month. The correct? tax bill every three couple months. Of years. Every three, I don't, you know. They're every three months, but uh, they don't get leaned to a tax bill for a long time. It used to be a year. They How long is that? It's usually two years in writing. It's, it's at least a year. Is that a policy? That's a practice. I don't, I don't know. Well, you know, practice. that I think is how you solve the problem. Okay. You know, if somebody doesn't pay that bill, it becomes a tax title. Okay. And that means somebody can walk in to that property and recover, pay the tax title, and claim a and, and claim a lien and title on that property. And that's the way you solve that problem, in my opinion. Generally speaking, and, and I do mean this very broadly, in Massachusetts, the laws of what you can do on the finance side are fairly lenient versus what you can do on the operations side to get better behavior. So I can't close uh, on a piece of property and put them in tax title nearly as fast as I can not issue them a permit if they're a business. So that's really, it's the stick in the carrot. And you know, and it's a, this uh, probably is a different discussion for a different day, but I understand right. you want to encourage good behavior. And uh, you know, and by that we mean 
certainly in the environment we're in, yeah. that people are paying their bills in a timely way. And, and that they're not t intentionally right. allowing their water bill to go into tax title so that they can somehow nefariously pay that and think they can deduct it as a, as a tax bill. And that happens as I'm sure. Even you though know. that's illegal, of course. Yeah. People, you know, there are people that do this. Yeah. And so, you know, to me, I think what, you know, the, the practice has been two years. That's a long time. Yeah, it is. I mean, it seems like to me, I don't know what our legal standing would be. New treasurer, new ideas. Yeah, you know, I think that, the, you yeah. know, I think it's reasonable to expect people to pay their bills. Yeah. And if somebody has a problem, I understand that. And if somebody comes in and says, you know what, um, I, I'm not going to be able to pay in this cycle and here's why, and you work out a payment plan with them, and there's sure. no reason why you couldn't do that. We do on a regular basis. And, and, and I think we should do that. Yeah. I, I think I mean, that's highly appropriate. The issuance of a permit, I mean, a permit is a privilege. It's not a right. So if you're coming in here and you're asking for a permit, it's reasonable. It's a reasonable expectation that you'd be asked, are you, are you taking care of your other town obligations? I, I don't disagree. And then we would use that as a say, well, but that's you know. a permit, not a license. Well, that was my question. Yeah. So, first of all, if you don't have the appetite for it, there's no point in looking at it. It's up to you. I think it's a good opportunity to have the conversation. Yeah. You can decide whether you want to enforce. I think we should explore all avenues okay. to get to manage our revenue right. best. We we promised people we would right. do that. I wouldn't I wouldn't um, avoid it, but I'd use it. Yeah, and just just to be clear, this is not a problem in running. This is very much at the margin. I wouldn't imagine. We collect, you know, as, no, as high a percent like, yeah. of taxes as any community does. Right. We're very low on that because yeah. what you data you showed us before. I know that. But, but we have from time to time run into people who do it as a strategy, as you discussed, I, for that and other reasons. It's clear that p there are people doing and, that. You know, maybe they want to expand their business and they need a bunch of licenses and permits to do it, and they stop for cash flow reasons, stop paying any bills. There are businesses that do that as yeah. well. There are homeowners that do that as well. We'll catch them eventually. Yeah. We always do. Uh, you know, I just think you, technology is such that we can have good policy and practice tied to each of the things that we've just discussed. You know, whether it's the issuance of permits, whether it's a more timely okay. move to tax title. I mean, you know, okay. kind of all of those things. I think we should. I think we, all that should be on the table. I agree. Um, so we've recorded no changes from Ivory's draft in front of us with the uh, we haven't discussed the number of days to notification but it's proposed to be 10 days are there any other proposed changes to the draft language well, the other thing you want to look at it, uh, 5a also oh yeah good, yeah i was going to say that and thank you yes what's our other bylaws state I 500 feet uh there's some other 300 feet is 100 yards this is a business that's doing nothing different really in inside its business So with this one, we would send a letter to this commission, and I would notify them that this is a request of the local community. It's on them whether they follow it or not. Just want to make sure that that's clear. It's in their discretion. Yeah, it's in their discretion. Is there a distance we apply today for similar constraints that's convenient to reuse here? I believe the Board of Health recently changed from 500 to 1,000 feet for one that's, of their regulations. That's for tobacco. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That was, that's a little different animal. Yeah, but it's similar in terms of child, where children congregate, yeah. which. But the thousand feet phrase. covered one store. Right. Is this for 500 feet? And 500 did not. That's correct. Right. And so I, I'd be happy to put 500 in there. Yeah. Because um, there could be some places that go in. Yeah, after that's the fine. Draft. I'd be happy with okay. 500. Why don't we? Sounds like the board is fine with 500, and 10-day notification. Right, and maybe we should do unless otherwise waived because. Um, just in case there's a situation where Self the meetings, yeah, yeah, so we can waive that in writing. I'll add language. Um, they think. Yeah, just in case, so you don't have to hold a special meeting. We're going to be cutting this close every time. Right, yes. so you we'll are. put language in there. And You know, in a way that's good. It gets us off the dime and it, it doesn't delay the right. process so that the applicant the knows what they're manager. dealing with yeah, one way or the other. Receipt of the notice from the commission. I think so, yeah. Uh, your point about slow legal mail, this is on the receipt of the notice, so the mail delay doesn't doesn't apply. It's not until it arrives here that the clock starts. Is that true? Not necessarily. 
to when the post office or whoever delivers the mail says it's been delivered. Now, again, if it's some kind of a registered receipt, I'm good with that. It should be under the statute. They're required to send it via certified mail. I'm okay with that. So it's not the physical receipt of the notice in, in our hands. Correct. It's when it's been if you've, ever, if you've ever seen my desk, you'd be very concerned about that state. That's <laughs> okay. Can attest. All right. Understand. Okay. Any other comments from the board? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Let the Board of Selectmen adopt the Keno policy as amended. Second. I have a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Four zero. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Yes, here we are. Sorry, just one more last thing. Can um, you authorize Ray and I to send a letter to the state reflecting the adoption of these conditions? I don't think we need a motion. Please no. go ahead and do it. Okay. Yes. Thanks. Do it. <laughs> So thank just, you for coming yeah, in. Thanks. Thank you. Guys. Yeah, thank thank you. you. We waited patiently while we got here. Oh, no worries. So, you know, we can now do this. Bob, you'll get the you'll you'll get notification. Is it possible that when you get that notification, you just send it out to to, the, to us, the board? So, if any of us has an, you know, we could. Is that appropriate to send it out to the whole board? You can send it out to the whole board, but then the board and individual can't comments. No, no, we can't. Yeah. We can't do. Right. Well, we can only communicate individual to Bob, comments right? to me. Oh, that's like, you know, that's right in the middle of a neighborhood with a lot of parking issues. I'm, I have a concern and then maybe okay. have the, you know, decide to have a, you know, a, a, not all the time, but just on a one case by yeah, case. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure that Something out. Something may jump out at right. Right. one of us. Right. And I think right. reserving that right is a, is a wise choice. Right. Again, you know, um, I, 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 we get one crack at it because apparently, yeah. unlike the other things, unless they do something, you know, really crazy, you know, the state will just renew it and there's nothing that we can do about it. But there'll be people in the room potentially, and you know, we do this. And I hate to have that happen. <coughs> Best intentions of men. Right. So. All right. Okay. Thank, thank, thank you. you guys. Thank you. Go Thanks very you. much. It's nice to have you. Thanks. All right. Um, next on the topic is the Board of Selectmen survey, which is. Uh, oh, no, we got to do the manager manager goals. Goals. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm ahead. Yeah, that, this will be um, quick. Um, it was it was in your packet. Ahead of time. Yeah, I actually have only one question. Okay. And that is, um, I like the the bundling. I think it's much more yep. effective. Right. Um, I, so the only question becomes, I mean, one of the things, and you may or may not have done this on purpose, I, knowing you, you probably did. There's five bundles and there's five selectmen. Um, however, when I look at inside the bundles, um, it makes me almost, you know how you've mixed and matched yeah. your staff person? Yep. Should we be mixing and matching, or should we yes. just stick to a bundle? Well, it's, it's obviously up to you, but last year I, I thought one selectman per bundle was appropriate. Honestly, this year I don't think it is. I think I each of you thing, should look I, at the I 25 it, goals and tell me what you're interested in. It's almost like the committees. And, you know, when I, when I think about the composition of the skill set of the board, yeah. I see them cross-roughing out of the bundles. Okay. That's um, why I think it would be ideal if we all just put forth those that were passionate about or interested yeah, in. Yeah, I, I thought last meeting we left it that way, but clearly not since no one answered. Well, I actually, were we supposed to do that? Well, I, thought I don't it was know. By, but I thought it was by bundle. Okay, I thought no. it was by bundle. That's that, okay. So I came no, prepared I, I, to... Okay. I thought it was... What's we, the bundle? I thought we were going to do it the way you had just initially suggested. Okay, so we're all in violent but, agreement, so let's um, do it right <laughs> So do we want to just wait and send just, it to uh, you? Send me an email. Can you know, send it? I you can send it to you, right? I can way. resend out a form with the 25 if you want, if it's easier for you, and then you can just indicate oh, that's your fine. interest. We can just check off. We can yeah. send it as a spreadsheet with an yeah. open slot next to it so okay. that we could put our check name all, in there. Check all that apply. All that apply. <laughs> there you go. I'll just ask you typically, we do one, two, three. Uh, I don't remember which is more interesting, which is less, but that gives me some idea because you've got to fill out all. Committees, however, we got that spreadsheet. Okay. Yeah. How many yeah. more nights do you have open in a month? <laughs> <laughs> Remember, once you put well, your name to it, a lot, lot of, of these have daytime. night meetings. I understand. I've been to a few of these in the daytime. I have another one tomorrow. So. <laughs> Actually, that's something we should bring up now. Uh, who plans to go tomorrow to the North Reading meeting? Well, what time is that? 3.30. Which meeting is that? North Reading uh, MWRA, you know, internal. I saw that on my count. I never place in time, though. Okay. I was unaware of it. I hope, I'm hoping only two of you want to go. I couldn't attend the last one. I should, one of us should probably go for continuity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I can I'll, I'll, I'll send go. you both a draft when is agenda. Is it tomorrow? What time? 3.30. Oh, I did. Where, where is it? Town Hall. Here. Town Hall. Here. Here, Town Hall. Bring the donuts. It's here. here. Yeah. 
I, th I think I can so make it. Either way is fine. If you so can get out of work, go. I'm already, I'm already committed. I'm right going. next door. All right, you're going, Dan. You're going to go because you've been there. Okay. Yeah. And um, I'm I'm available as the backup because I've right. been to these so many yep. of these. Yep. I, I, I a couple of twists and turns here, but we'll be fine. I think I'll. I'll um, what else? Um, I think we're caught up to the survey, unless you want to do minutes first in case anyone's coming for. Uh, what time well, is our? Well, you're 20 minutes early, so. Sorry, doesn't guys. And I, it doesn't feel like it. Now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it Aquino took it out of us, didn't yeah, he? Uh, uh, why don't we go through the minutes real quick? Um, uh, move to uh, approve the minutes of June 27, 2017, as amended. Second. We have a second. Any further discussion? I checked all the appointments. Kaylin, you got it 100% right. Including <laughs> the three that I added on the spot. I'm yeah. fine with everything I saw in there. The only comment is on page, uh, it's marked 682. Yeah. Um, on the hazard mitigation plan, the discussion that went on was much longer than uh, this suggests. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't think it needs much. I would just say that there was a, a, a lengthy discussion on improvements and, and a weaknesses. melee ensued. <laughs> <laughs> it, it wasn't just a typo on page one. Well, I mean, that's where it started. And it a ended demand bad. for refund was. <laughs> so we're very good about it. I'll Unprecedented say. <laughs> commentary. Okay, that was my only comment. Any other amendments? If not, all, uh, all those in favor? Four zero. And we're still twenty minutes ahead. Take a two minute break. Why don't we take yeah. a, uh, a bio break here?
if I could just point out, um, there's a policy, uh, there's a serve draft survey in your packet tonight that has the final suggested language. And after discussing this with Matt, he just had one, well, he had a couple of suggestions. One that I think is sort of in intuitive is you can't circle things online. I caught that. <laughs> I caught that. He's, he's, sure he, you can. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He said, you may want to say select or something yeah. like that. I said, yeah, that's a good idea. Well, Survey Monkey can tell you all the uh, statistics, how many boxes were checked. In well, then they'll also fix the yeah. format. Yeah, I, I look. This format won't work. Well, just just to give you some background, if if you don't mind, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, yes. I have I have no knowledge of Survey Monkey at all. It's an interesting name. Um, our library has a test license, I'll call it, which would have been far too limited for your purposes. A hundred responses, ten questions maximum. But they were kind enough over the weekend to develop a draft, which I really did appreciate. We then took it over downstairs and put it in a full version, if you will. Oh, into their template. <coughs> you know, their template into, um, you know, the multiple user. We have a full license in Town Hall and so on and so forth. Oh, for survey so monkey. technologically, we're ready to go with whatever edits you decide. But I have to give you the caveat that I've never used it, so I don't, I don't know if there's kind of unexpected consequences here. Normally, I know that stuff and can tell you. I just don't know. So this has been drafted already in some earlier yes. versions. Yes. Yeah. This draft that is currently in front of you, yeah. without the select question uh, change, rather, we've is gone, in survey mode. We've gone through it. Somebody's gone through it a couple times and said it's executing properly. That I don't know. In our old um, software associated with our website, we specifically did not do that because you could not uh, discriminate and throw out data you didn't want to count in a survey. So we couldn't test it because that was that was the first response and the second response. They don't have a sandbox to test it in. So you couldn't put it on there and then just have one person do it and see if it came through? That was, again, that was a website free tool that came with our website oh, okay. that we used to use frequently. Very, and, and then it would be spammed. <laughs> uh, and it would give you nonsense answers. I see. Oh. And we couldn't, you know, exclude that either other than just through discussion. Do we even know that the 2A, 2B, 2C is processing right? where depending on the answer to one, it goes to the right question. Do we even um, know that? I don't know if you can forbid questions, if forbid or determine a path. So in other words, you know, it says, please do this. I don't know that we can ensure that's the only path you can take. I think SurveyMonkey will, will do solve that, that formatting okay. problem for you. For example, it won't look like this. Okay. Um, it's gonna, I mean, cause there's, oh, this calls so, for a circle. So when you, so when you say, Gonna put a radio button, and you're gonna, it's gonna click be it. right. right? Yes, right. That but does then, do that, right? So if you if you if like you clicked, a, if you clicked um, one you know, a two, you, you couldn't that the radio wouldn't light up for you to do B because you've already picked A. I believe that that's what you're gonna see. Or is right. it just gonna take you to two, and it's gonna be a different two depending that, on? It's what. correct. Yeah. We can. I I know that you can force just choose one. So in number one, you choose one. You can only choose one. Right. What I don't know is if you choose one A. Does it send you to 2A and then just make you skip over 2B and 2C? It has 2C. to be able to, that's, it just has to. That I would believe seem, that's what it does. Okay. That would seem to be not to be difficult to program, but. Who, who is programming this, the uh, library? Probably, uh, right now it's Jane Miller downstairs. She's got a lot of experience with You're this. You're doing this to test it? Uh, uh, no, this is this no, will, this will be for live. I mean, I'm sure she could do a test version. Okay, yes. I misunderstood. I thought you said that, that their program only could the, manage. The library our, did it over the weekend just <coughs> to get it started. And, and tested it, it was fine. Oh, so it did. That part's so, you know, I, I again, I have no knowledge. I don't know, does it take, you know, an hour? Does it take two days to get these things it? going? Did anyone okay, see so it? I used it. Oh, you did, okay. Yeah. So I have a question. Who is the professional management instrument for this survey? Uh, I would say Matt and uh, Jane. Yeah. Jane Miller and Matt no, Cronos. I, I ask it the wrong way. Okay. The library is gonna manage this? They started it for us. They started it, they programmed it, they've stepped away. It's your right. survey, it's now on autopilot. Okay, are we using a professional survey tool? Survey Monkey. Yes. Okay. That's what I'm trying to ascertain. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so we're gonna use them, we're gonna we're gonna present to them our finished product after tonight. Them being Survey Monkey. That's just a piece of no, software. They, that's the engine that puts all this right. data together. And 
in theory, generates reports. We just have a license to use that piece. So somebody of has an administrator license to go in yeah. and pull That's what I'm saying. Out. There's an admin, right. and that'll be it has to be James. constructed. He's got that. Right. That's okay. right. And they can do that in a month. They can do that in a week and give you interim data. Okay. Again, you're asking the wrong guy. Uh, that would seem like a reasonable thing. using for the Comcast survey. Okay. Did you notice? Right. Yeah. Is, is it okay? Um, you said you did it, Bob. Did it jump over? Did it give you all of the twos, A, B, and C, or did it jump over? Do you remember? I don't remember, honestly. I, but it, but it, you didn't look at it and go, oh, this is wrong. I didn't notice anything that was obviously bro broken or wrong. Right. Dan. Um, in looking over the uh, the choices we're giving folks, uh, there is some advantage to saying name your top three in that you force people to think it through and prioritize what's really important. Where would you apply? Where you um, well, you could say instead of select all that apply, you could say select the three most relevant in each category, uh, as opposed to, I could see where you, some of these people are going to check a lot of boxes and your informational content may be well, kind of diluted. The one, see what I'm saying? Yeah, the one instance yeah. I think you're, you, you're absolutely correct. There'll be a tendency for some people to say, you know, all, click, yeah. click, 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 and it kind of right. dilutes the value of it. So forcing it to be limited to three uh, yeah. does form some dis force some discretion. And you'll see some spikes in, in the responses that way. Well, there's only uh, uh, question have to adjust the software if you do that, because this exactly. software has been written a different way. I don't know that. I assume it can be adjusted. Is it a big deal? I don't know. <laughs> well, I don't it was good when I'm the one that knows how to use things. <laughs> Can't say. Well, like question four has like how did you how do you gather your information? You may have somebody well, that knows different. what they're doing. That's okay. That In the one. audience, John. <laughs> oh, I, hi, Vanessa. Yeah, we have it in our packet. In our packets, so I oh, can't I get it. We have a balky projector, so unfortunately, it's not projecting. We have extra packets. You know what? Here, you can just take mine. I have I have it on. Uh, so whatever is left for the media packets. Yeah, they've they oh, stuff there. I'm going to assume that if you want to change it from pick all that apply to pick the top three, we can do that. Not a problem. All right. Just a thought. I What's the sense of the board to change from check all to check your top three? Well, but which question would that? Would I that think it's two it a, a, two B. Two B. Um. I think two C is okay as it is. Actually, one issue. I, I, I'm sure it doesn't represent this way, but two B starts at I rather than A. That's PCs. just that doesn't matter. Yeah. Don't worry okay. about that. That's All Microsoft right. work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, gotta re-kick the uh, index. So. Well, sir, anywhere it says circle all that apply, which is well, I would say let's limit it to two A, two B. There's a lot of choices. Uh, I, I'm okay letting two C just have the choices that are there. Three, uh, three. I would say, yeah. Yes, what? Apply it there. Top three. Top three. Four. No need. Uh, that's the last one. Yeah. One answer, one answer. Yeah. And then eight. Um, yeah, well. No, I think it's important to kind of get a breadth of an eight. what people use. Yeah, I would agree with Barry. And actually, there was one that I would add in mm -hmm. um, that, um, you know, between veteran services and other, um, and for just sort of an encompassing thing is, um, and Bob, I don't know which department it would go. But just um, have, uh, applying for a permit. Have you applied for a permit, whether that be a, a, a variance or a business permit? Building. Building that's, permit. That's going to be hard because some majority is building inspector, building department. You know, people may interpret the word permit to be I go to the town clerk for something or I go to Caitlin for something. So. Well, actually, you know what? Maybe just say public service. Town clerk. You gotta be gone to the window. Yeah, that's a common, common visit. And she and, and, we, and we know the things that she encompasses. Or pay a bill upstairs. I mean, you know, what's the point of the survey? It's really the what information are you trying to gather? <coughs> what are we gonna do with the data? I mean, you could right. say town hall, for that matter. Right. Have you ever gone to town hall? Pay a bill. See, see Laura. Right. See Caitlin. It, it, I, I think it's. It, I look at this as kind of like a two-way informational system. Obviously, we're trying to gather information about the public. Both their, you know, their perception of things, their appetite, but it's also a way for us to communicate to the public about some of the things that we're mm -hmm. really kind of thinking about as we, um, you know, craft the next ask. And so, 
I think the more information that we have in terms of what people use, again, I don't think it's something on this side say like, what do you think is the most important thing? Veterans versus human ser elder services or, you know, I don't think it's, we want to rank those, but it's just to get a sense of, you know, what people are using. Um, I, I think, think it's important. We're going to do that probably in the second round when we sharpen the pencil. Um, did you want to add town hall or? or like, yeah, just some like whether, it, yeah. I, I, Permitting came to mind because maybe it does encompass a lot of well, different it, things. The with permitting is valid like there because if we have to cut back on public services, that's going to impact permitting. Right, but I, I think this is already like my point is you yeah. want to do that in greater detail than the current survey allows you to do. This might open the door to it, but maybe um, a second round. A second round. Yeah, yeah. Or just say or, or just say town hall. You know. All right. You could simplify uh, human elder services, recreation, veterans to be town hall. It's all here, but. The reason those are there is I, I thought there was some interest in the board in sort of cross tabulating. Right. right. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's no there's no easy way to draw that line and say that's this is the right bunch. Yeah. Well, you know, it's veteran services kind of stands out as well. Obviously, there's not a large segment of our community using that. Why are you even asking? And the question is, well, if you want to do cross tab work, what are the things you really want to think about in terms of demographics that cross tab? I agree. And I don't know, that's that's an open question. Or maybe instead of permitting or town hall, just say town clerk. You can just add that, certainly. Yeah. Yeah, why don't we add it in between F and G, add town clerk. And then we call it a day, gentlemen. We're done? No further changes? Yeah, no, I thought it was, uh, listen, we. That's good for, you started it, Barry. It's we, good no, job. we, I mean, we all just, I mean, again, the more eyes I look at it, you know. And there's, uh, no, there's two eyes over there. Okay, we'll get you a uh, link. By the way, this is 34 bucks a month, that so. I'm sorry, Vanessa. Yeah. Yes. Say that again. Uh, for 2A, right. if you voted yes, um, please specify why you voted yes. Uh, or the top three below for why you voted yes. Right. Uh, just a minor suggestion. Um, we're still, we're still not getting the action part. So if, if you if So you, if you were to read this, if you voted yes, please yes, circle all the yes. reply and then skip to question three, right. historical cuts. Um, there's no association. Are you clear that the board changed it to select the top three for this one, not circle all that apply? Uh, yes, excuse me. I missed that. Sorry. Um, I don't know if that helps. Yes, thank you. Um, question five, I still found the um, problem. Yeah, I, it was more a folksy way of saying it. Um, but I don't know if that's in here, though. It, it isn't, but. Um, you, should, you know what? That was actually better. What's that? Let me look it up. Um, let me see if I can find it. That was good. Has the box been changed? Well, we, it's been a proposal. I've got to dig it up here. Who did I send it to? Is that new or The wording is a little different. Uh, John or Dan? Uh, <coughs> Barry changed it. But I suggest. I think that's kind of what you. So I think you probably do question six before five. Six sort of sets that framework. Already. Damn, where I think well, I guess it doesn't really tell you how much you're paying now, though. I got rid of I cast the question a little differently. I think I said Reading uses 25 fewer communities in Massachusetts for st statistical and demographic graphic comparison without looking it up mm. would you what would be your assumption of Reading's average home bill tax home bill compared to the peer average in other words we know you don't know right that's just just and that's just what you just said kind of 
Yeah, I, I think John's wording is pretty yeah, clear. Yeah, that was good. Uh, and then technical for 5A, should there be more or higher, if not more higher annually? Oh, uh, yeah. It's more better and more higher. <laughs> so littler. I don't know about that. I got to think about that. Better or more? Uh, no, no, I it, think it's right. It is right. One thousand or more. more. That's that's a higher pause. than one thousand or more annually, or one thousand or more greater. Well, does it need punctuation in order to clarify it? Because it sounds dopey. <laughs> okay, just say it. I mean, I I get where you're going with this, um, but I think it needs something. Uh, you can change it to one thousand plus sign. You making notes about? Um, yeah, I don't know how you do that, but how about we put the, the annual up here on the text and take it out down here? Yeah, that gets rid of some of the complexity. John, I think I have the language you just read. Send it to you. Yeah, and I'll change if the board is agreeable a to plus a thousand plus and e to a thousand minus. Yeah, you can, Bob, you can move annually up to the text portion. So yeah. You don't have to okay. It in the questions. Yep. I like that the way it stood out on the next page. <laughs> I have no idea. Clueless. <laughs> well, you want people to kind of maybe smile for the go to exactly. question six. <laughs> Beats me. was there originally and it was combined into B I have not had any attend or plan to attend which is a the implication there is that you have children but they are no I don't elsewhere. I don't think that's the implication from a consumer I've not had any children attend I don't know not had any children attend or plan to attend. So it encompasses people who don't have children at all, as well as people who have children that do not go to the schools or ever will go to the schools. I think she's saying, yeah, but they could attend a school other than RPS. Uh, what if they go to a private school? Right. I think that's what her point is. It's I, the, the that's what the, is that they attend a private school as opposed to a residential school. Correct. That's that's what it's there for. That's what it's there. Yeah, but she's there's no, there, but what if you simply don't have children at all? She's right. So we've combined two. You don't have them, or you do have them, but they're not going to attend. And we merge those. I thought that was your conscious choice to not separate those two thoughts out and to s cast some negative aspersion on the schools for those that went to private schools. Correct. That was an we tried it the other way, and it looked a little too stark. Yeah. I don't have kids. <laughs> okay. All right. Do I, I, I have kids, but they're not going to, you know, they're not going to. Um, right. I, 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 to me, that's the more interesting. That's what I want to know. We wrote it that way originally, and we, we got morphed into this. So we're at the point now we're actually making well, it worse. It was originally that way, and there was some concerns, and not necessarily from anybody in this room, but it came up that you were now polarizing those with children and those without children. That's right. I remember that. I mean, so. that was the complaint about the way we had it before. Yeah, so. so we were responsive to that and tried to kind of, you know, find a way to get to both of those things inside of one question to avoid polarization because that's it was separated before yeah. well, that was a feeling that was I mean you know we can honor that okay Any, anything else uh, those are all the high level ones um, I have some general Talking about it for the first time tonight, so. Oh, right. okay. Is this going to be purely a survey monkey instrument, or are we going to no, afford we're, anyone we're a chance? At, the, at a minimum, plan to do hard copies in town hall, the library, uh, and How the senior center. How can those be integrated into one? Uh, have to enter them separately. Yeah. We'll have to have staff enter them. Yeah. Right. For the proxy. administrator. Uh, they charge five bucks each. Maybe people yeah, right. do it themselves. The survey monkey. Uh, maybe nobody knows this answer. Can, <laughs> can they check on multiple submissions from one? Yeah, there's there's ways to do that, and it's an open question whether you want to consciously try to prevent that. It's a complicated issue, okay. as you probably know. Not a high priority. Yep. I think most people.
people will not be able to. I hate to make you do this, but let's, let's put it this way. If someone enters multiple answers, we will know what you want to do with it. It's a different question. Can you quickly review the edits you've collected then? Sure. <coughs> We have uh, question 2A and 2B will be a pick top three. Mm -hmm. and, a, and circle goes to select. Circle goes to select in all of these. Yeah. Uh, question 3 goes to pick top three. Okay. We'll look at your language for question 5 for rewording and remove annual from down below and make sure it's only up above. Yep. I will change more uh, to plus or minus in uh, choices A and E. Make sure that makes sense. Um, I will add town clerk to uh, eight. question eight. That's, I think uh, that's and it. then uh, I think we already did this in Survey Monkey. The thank you again belongs at the end, not before oh, the well, finally. Is there anything you want to add? So that's now it. Is there a way for, um, I guess, Matt or Jane to kind of compile the, um, the last part? The last part into sort of, you know, categories or. I mean, there's going to be not in advance, no. No, but we'll I mean, just as, as it as it gets collected, sort of. It'll have, have to be done to manually. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah that's what I mean. I mean. What we've done in the past is, in some surveys, you might get a couple hundred answers, list all the text in the order that was received. Just read them. I'll just, just read them. Yeah. By the way, you're oh, I think the library did that. You're going to get the yeah. others. You have others fill in the blanks too. That's true. Do the same yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, speak now. Sorry. I think you got to wait for reasonable data. I think the worst thing in the world for us to do would be to take the first three dozen and say, great, this is the trend. We really need to make sure we get a st statistically relevant. I, I'm thinking it's got to be. Do we want to let it, like, do we want to put a timeline we on it? We should put a. I'd like to see what you catch uh, first. You definitely want to go done. into September. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking like a three month thing, but. Mm, we'll see. Well, it's now July. Middle, middle of September. Maybe, yeah. maybe in time for discussion at the October financial forum. That'd be great. Right. If, if, you can have results if this thing it. actually gets launched yeah. sooner or later. So it's out for six or eight weeks would be yeah, probably enough. Take it out to the end of September. Yeah. Now it's, you know, it's the compiling is pretty quick. Yep. Uh, yeah, the compiling is like a, it's, it's, a, it's well, an you Excel. Have to, you have to hand meld the it's manuals. A, it's a, right. yeah. But when is the, when is the October 4th? October 11th, I think. I think so. if you shut it off on September 30th, yeah. given more than ample time. I'd say that the, the to answer your question directly, I'm not sure how, if we only, only ended up with 20 or 30 responses, I'd be disappointed, but I don't even think they're relevant at that point. Yeah. You'd need, yeah, you'd need a minimum of, of 150 You're gonna or have 200. 100. I mean, one, of the things that w one of the things that I would um, hope and suggest is that, you know, through the different networks, I mean, it'll be available, I'm assuming, on the town website, is to just drive people to that and just like, Pound them into like take the survey, take the survey. You know. and we'll put it out there and we'll advertise it. I'm sure. Sometimes in fact, we'll, we'll, we'll do that when asked. But we're really relying on the power of people to tell their friends and family and neighbors. Um, this is really this is the first step. We really need this information and really just drive people to the to the website to take the survey. And to your second question, I think it should take the results, stratify them in some useful way, and present them at. at yeah paper or one of our meetings perhaps just summarize it and then we decide what we do as a second step I could easily imagine we would take one or two of these questions and use those as the subject matter for an expanded set of questions and do that in a second round most likely and you know if we finish this in October I can't see we, we can't take as much time the second round as we did this time we were trying to get this out by no, day. yeah and we, we, but, we started but in May we right? got it right though I think and so well hopefully the some of the lessons learned will help us the second go around Bob um, I asked a couple, a handful of staff in the building, um, what's the most important question? And it's pretty <coughs> unanimous that why did you vote no is the most important piece of data from this. So, you know, don't want to encourage people, you know, who voted yes as much as you want to encourage those that voted no. You really want to know. Right. Want to did you even not know about the election? I'm sure you heard from people that said that. I, I did. Yeah. What election? Right. And some that thought they were voting on the state ballot question. I, w I would say, did you vote no as one, and then um, three? <coughs> Why did you not? And then what would what would right. motivate you differently right. today? Those are the yeah. two. Yeah. 
And then the rest of this is just maybe input for us in terms of how people get their information, yep. how they, the value system they use. Because frankly, we're blind, right? That's really a lot of this is to put some headlights in terms of where we it's are. It's kind of like it's, it's, the, it's the last person who talked to us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> not quite that bad. But. Social media. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Question? No, that's oh, a minimum. Yeah. I think more is always better because it's statistically relevant. This is more like um, a health check. We're trying to get a sense of what's on people's minds. The more is going to give us more granularity and more more meaningful results. If you if you only get a couple hundred, you really wonder if you've seen. We have we have what twelve, sixteen out sixteen thousand registered voters. Right. Well, what was the votes cast? Nineteen thousand. Six, Sixty-eight hundred in the override. That's yeah. what you want to zero in on. If you can get one percent of the votes. So if you had 6,800 votes in the last election, and you get 680 responders. 10%, yeah. That's 1%. It's 1%. No, it's 10 well, 1%. It's 10%, that's right. 1% is stratified. It's not yeah. stratified. Yeah. Right, yeah. Although, let's so say, although I can envision, let's say, you know, we're, doing, we're gonna do the six, six, eight weeks, right? We're five weeks into it, and we have a 1,000 served as responses. That's probably enough. Right? But it's easy to go in and see what you have. You have a thousand surveys, but 750 of those thousand people said, I voted yes. Yeah. That's not as good a sample no. as Well, it's gonna tell you how reliable or unreliable right. the information right. is about what I, you need to I'd do. I'd rather have, instead of, a th I'd rather have 500 responses that oh. might more adequately reflect the way the vote this, went. This is the point I was making when it's I talked about it's not polling. Be, right, it's not going to be when scientific. Do, when you right. do real polling, you set up a universe yes. that's that set mirrors that. Right. Yeah. right, but we don't have that choice we here. Right. And we're going to have we're selection bias point. where right. folks will be naturally motivated to answer and they'll be overrepresented in the results. We can't conclude anything on the basis of the ratios it's only the absolute responses that we can I mean, uh, you can do what pollsters do, is scale the results to the election results. I don't get paid enough for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you throw right no, I think the, right most val the most valuable thing is to simply say, for those that said no, what was the motivation? For those that you said yes, more. and normalize right. it. Right. Mm. Yeah. But it. But but I guess to answer your question, more is more. I mean, I'd rather have yeah. more than less. Yes. And John. Because as it's circulating through And please don't stuff the ballot box. Yeah, please vote once. <laughs> what, 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 this is not a vote. Right. It's not a contest. Yeah, it's not a contest. Right. right. This is not voting for your all Yes, sir. Would you stand, let us know your name and your street. I'm uh, Tom Holmes on the Gleason Road. And I wasn't going to say anything except I just noticed this. Um, after 31 years of working at the Burlington Herald, I'm a very big print news guy. But for a I think the intention there was. Um, well, we didn't put the patch in here. Yeah. I, I'm not even asking. No, that was that I'm was not deliberate. That's fine. Other, That's fine. Other news sources. Yep. All know what print is All right. Yeah, you raise a really interesting yeah, point, and, and the discussion was based on physical hard newspapers or electronic. Now, in theory, C was meant to cover the Reading Advocate online. I'm not sure it's a terribly clear question now that I think of it this way. Well, and I'll say this. Within an hour after this meeting ends, uh, this could be one place you can read about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. These two gals might beat you to it. <laughs> <laughs> Other than Facebook, yeah. yeah. That's, that's a good feedback. I think yeah. the intention here was to determine Tab to the other questions, where were people getting their information? Was it the print press? Was it online? What, and and if, with what, with what sites? So, you, so what you're advocating the then print. is, and I think you're right, that there, you're missing a bullet. Yeah, I think we might. I, I think you're right about that. Because there are 
people news. would get their news from online news, the Patch or the Reading Post or wherever they get it. AOL. I mean, you know. Um, so I do think it would be appropriate to put another bullet in there that um, separates other electronic news sources from, from the print. From the print. Yeah. So we just say uh, electronic uh, online news source. Is it appropriate to not name a specific newspaper? I mean, they're obviously the two print newspapers in town. <coughs> I think at least should leave That's okay. So online electric news service or source. You might give an example or two. Patch, comma, Reading Post. Reading Post. Reading Post. Post. Yeah, I think that's a fair thing Post. to do. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, you're you are mentioning the names of the print. You would those are the uh, those are that's two a good that point. you're just trying to prompt the, the reader. Yeah. Trying to okay. trip their trigger to you know yeah. respond to how they get their news. Okay. You're trying to okay. figure that out. Three. One, two, three. We're done. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you very much for your comments. So, um, when would you expect to see this up and running? So we we'll Christmas. Have, we'll have two Survey Monkey <laughs> references on the web page. I like to think this week. <laughs> you would. Well, you'll not. put something out on. Um, nice that you'd like you to think you that. You will have it on this week. I mean, Matt. Matt runs our runs the town Facebook page, right? He can oh make an announcement that it's there. Oh, it's just a question of how long does it take them to change what they have to what you asked for, and I, I don't think it's hard, but I don't know that. Okay, so it you know it could be done uh, tomorrow and up tomorrow. Okay, so that's the survey discussion, gentlemen. Anything else uh, for this evening? Nope. Was that the board? last item? Yeah. The last item. We approve minutes. If not, I'll entertain we'll a motion to move adjourn. Move to adjourn the meeting. I second that. I have a second. At uh, nine thirty-one. All those in favor? Zero. Thank you, everybody, Thank you. and have a good evening. Thanks for all your help.